motion as amended, negatived. The fourth member's motion opposing the expansion of labor importation. Members wish to speak in the motion debate. Please press the request to speak button. I now call upon Mr. Kwok Wai Kang to speak and move the motion. Mr. Kwok Wai Kang, other members, please remain silent. Mr. President, I move the motion as printed on the agenda be passed. Mr. President, I move the motion on opposing the expansion of labor importation in response to the population policy consultation which has started the discussion on importation of labor. To promote social development, there is a need to plan um, human resources in the long term. But the t previous terms of the government have only introduced piecemeal measures. Their policy lacks foresight, and their policy is piecemeal. There is no detailed plan for long-term human resource development or long-term uh, training. As a result, there is a mismatching in the labor market. People are jobless, and yet there are vacancies unfilled. The administration has not come up with any solution to deal with mismatching. In recent uh, consultation paper on population thoughts for Hong Kong, the administration confuses the matter with uh, some statistics and say that certain industries have shortage of labor. It is drumming up support for importation of labor. The FTU stand um, shoulder to shoulder with all the uh, working class in Hong Kong, and we oppose the expansion of labor importation. There are three major reasons for opposing the importation of labor. Number one, Hong Kong has adequate manpower. The working conditions and pay of certain jobs are too bad, and therefore there is um, less willingness to enter those jobs, or, and young people are deterred from entering those jobs. In fact, there is an established importation of labor mechanism. First, on adequate uh, manpower in Hong Kong. If we look at the data in September by the CNS department, number of vacancies, 77,000 odd jobs. And if we look at the unemployed, 3 point something, 130,000 people are unemployed, and there are 57,000 people who are underemployed. And, and under the population policy, uh, there are uh, women who uh, are in the community. There are more than 500,000 of them, and they are enough to fill the 77,000 odd uh, vacancies. The administration has not done its part. In order to accommodate the business sector, the administration um, goes through the shortcuts and considers importing labor. It has not considered other measures to assist local workers to get jobs. Let us look at the construction industry. In the consultation document, para uh, 15 of Chapter 4, it says that uh, construction site vacancies increased by 74%, an alarming number, but that's by percentage. If you look at uh, the jobs and vacancies, um, with the 70 percent increase in 2012, 588 vacancies. This year, 1,000 vacancies. So that is an increase of 470 percent. But that's just a difference of 400 vacancies. And according to the Integrated Household Survey, uh, construction workers, uh, 13,000 people were unemployed. If the 13,000 uh, construction workers I can get the skills and fill the uh, 400 vacancies, or rather fill the 1,000 vacancies. There's still 10 person competing for one job, and there are 110,000 non-skilled workers who are unemployed. They are waiting for job. They are waiting for jobs. If they can be better trained, they can take up the vacancies. They don't need to. Uh, they, the, the business sector doesn't need to Im import foreign labor. The second point 
is that poor working conditions and low pay deter new entrants. Uh, even if we have a labor force, we have low unemployment rate. Many industries are competing for workers. Uh, that's true for individual industry, and there there may be gaps in certain industries, whether it's construction industry, catering industry, or retail industry, or the elderly care business. Uh, they ask for importation workers, but is it true? If you look at the facts, look at the. Um, their pay and working conditions. You know why workers don't want to join. Say for the as for the catering industry, in June two thousand three, um, catering and hotel, the actual wage index one one seven, and uh, this in this year one o three point seven. In ten years' time, real wage declined. Working hours, median working hours, rising and rising, 54 hours. Industrial accidents. Then the industrial accident number is the highest in uh, the first half of 2012. More than 3,000 industrial accidents. There are 210,000 in the catering working in the catering industry. It is estimated that more than 60 percent. Of the workers, do not enjoy paid meal hour and paid leave days. In order to save the cost, one uh, worker has to take up different duties. Say, for example, the waiter will have to do washing dishes. Even if one spend eighty thousand, uh, eighteen thousand, to get a um, staff to wash dishes. Um, the staff uh, member uh, will have to um, do it by contracting out. You have to guarantee uh, that uh, there will be uh, bodies all the time, and there will be no leave and no sick leave. This is a contract arrangement. This is a uh, bogus uh, self-employed arrangement. Poor working conditions, low pay, long working hours, high industrial accidents. How can uh, that? That's the cons that, that is the reason for the difficulty to hire new workers. Now some say that retail industry is difficult in getting employees, but there is no growth in pay. Look at demand and supply. If there is com competition for more staff members, then there should be increase in salaries. But the median wage of retail industry is lower than the median wage of other industries. In 2012, is about ten thousand dollars for the retail industry, but for the general median wage, uh, it is twelve thousand eight hundred. The difference of one quarter. Recently. Uh, because of the boom in tourism industry, um, the fruit of economic success is taken away by rising rent. Now, so for uh, retail industry, rent uh, median wage uh, rose to one hundred sixty-eight in twenty thirteen, but in two thousand three eighty-six. So it's nearly doubled. So how can you expect any increase in salaries? Long working hours. A uh, few leave days, little a uh, poor pros prospect, are uh, the problems of retail industry. How can that not undermine the incentive to work in the retail industry? Even if there is new blood every year, uh, there is an equal number of uh, workers who leave this industry. In 2012, 100,000 people. Between the age group of 15 to 29, join the retail industry. If there is importation of labor, these uh, this group of young people with no chance to join the labor force. That is already a, a an importation of labor mechanism. In order to import low skill employees, employers can uh, apply under the SLS supplementary labor scheme. Um, the vetting mechanism. It's done through the uh, labor advisory board. There is close monitoring. If there is a shortage 
of labor and it is necessary to import labor, it will be approved by the LAB. The government does not need to find excuses for the bosses to build another platform to get round this uh, approval mechanism. Mr. President, we understand that um, we cannot uh, solve the mismatching in the labor market overnight. There, there is a need for a number of facility uh, arrangements, including standard working hours, family friendly arrangements, uh, care for elderly, helping new immigrants, uh, disabled, and also ethnic minority, and also help young people to join the labor market. This will um, enable um, the uh, labor market to have um, the, uh, a future. And young people have a low, uh, ha have a high unemployment rate, 15 percent, um, in July, in the uh, third quarter, or in the second quarter, rather. Um, that is a poor job prospect for young people. We need to have a bright future for young people in order to attract people, young people to join various industries. Uh, there should also be early um, job placement for young people. There is also the need to improve the apprenticeship schemes so that um, apprentices can learn useful skills. And that is also the issue of the QF, quali um, um, Qualification Framework. The response is not enthusiastic. It's rather academic to make QF successful. Um, it should be packed to remuneration um, framework. If you reach a certain level of QF, Um, Ms. Beck, I, I can't hear you. A quorum count, please.
咁啊。郭偉強議員，多謝 Mr. 郭偉強。Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. President. The FTU urges the administration to think twice before uh, changing the importation of labor uh, policy. Otherwise, we become a bomb. It will destroy the expectation of improving working conditions and increasing and also uh, pay increase. The administration does not improve the working conditions and treatment for laborers. The administration just get round uh, uh, the arrangement and try to uh, build a platform uh, to bypass the LAB's letting mechanism. That is putting the cart before the horse. As representative of the FT of workers, we strongly oppose that. Thank you. I now put a question to you, and that is Mr. Uh, Ko Wai Kang's motion be passed. Four members have moved amendments to this motion. This council will now proceed to a joint debate on the motion and the four amendments. I will first call upon Mr. Pun Siu Ping to speak, to be followed by Mr. Frankie Yik, Ms. Cheng Lai Wan, and Mr. Li Chuck Yan, respectively. But they may not move amendment at this stage. Mr. Pun Siu Ping. Mr. President, last year, Mr. Si Wai Long became the CE. Later, he promoted infrastructure projects tremendously. And then on various locations, there were suggestions that there should be importation of labor. The attitude of the business sector is very clear. At the beginning of this year, when Si Wai Long attended a Q&A session in this council, he mentioned insufficient manpower to support development. And he said that uh, we might have to consider importing labor. At that time, the labor sector did respond, did, did respond to his remarks. And now we have this Thoughts for Hong Kong public consultation document. This represents the position of the government on importation of labor, although it has packaged its proposal in another form. We clearly oppose labor importation. This is not just because of the interest of the labor sector. In 2012, there are over 400,000 poor households involving 1 million of people. When society discusses how to assist the poor families, labor importation was suggested by society. I have to warn the government, any proposed expansion of our labor importation policy will affect the overall interest of society. In the consultation document on population policy, it's mentioned that in 2012, only 2,410 foreign workers were imported, amounting to 0.1 percent of the overall workforce. In other jurisdictions, they have more relaxed policies. In Singapore, in 2012, it imported 880,000 low-skilled workers, amounting to 28 percent of its workforce. Macau. 87,000 odd, 26 percent of its workforce. If you compare these figures, you see that undoubtedly they're misleading the public. The facts are not like that. In Chapter 2 of the consultation document, to release the potential of the existing population, it is said that every day, 150, and every year, 54,700 people entered Hong Kong with an average age of 36 years old. As for the working age, 48% of them are in economic activities, 87% of them in low-skilled jobs. According to the Home Affairs Department and the Immigration Department on statistics on new immigrants in 2012, for those above 15 years old, one-way permit holders, 47,700 odd. 
if most of them are in low-skilled jobs in 2012, we already imported 41,000 low-skilled workers, amounting to 1.26% of the workforce of Hong Kong. That is, for one-way permit holders, 48% of participation in employment indicates that last year in the job market for the low-skilled jobs, for one-way permit holders, they amount to around 20,000. Every year, Hong Kong imports low-skilled workers. Ten, the actual number is tenfold that mentioned in the doc consultation document. Under the one-way permit system, every year Hong Kong imports a great number of low-skilled workers, giving impetus to the overall workforce. That is an objective fact. At present, the unemployment rate has improved. Some employers still import labor, disregarding the uniqueness of Hong Kong's job market. We should reject employers' requests to import labor to enhance the participation rate of one-way permit holders and to assist them in their employment. That's the correct direction to be taken by the government. Apart from one-way permit holders and the supplementary labor importation scheme, we also have general employment policies to import talents from the mainland. The consultation document discloses that last year under the employment policy, we did import labor as well as talents from the mainland. Over 86,000 of them were imported. Prima facie, these schemes are to import professionals and skilled workers that Hong Kong lacks. But these importation schemes are only under the Immigration Department with very low transparency. Employers have actually abused such systems by taking shortcuts. In 2011, HECTO, in order to evade monitoring and bypass the supplementary import labor scheme, successfully applied to the Immigration Department for importing labor. Thus, their employees and trade union representatives were dissatisfied. The Labor Department was asked to follow up on the incident. All sorts of labor importation schemes have been subject to such abuses. From limited information we have uh, under our general employment policy and also under various labor importation schemes, the wages of imported workers earn usually no more than $20,000. In commerce and in industry, as well as other professions, these imported workers can work in any trade and industry. Many of the imported workers are not actually the professionals and skilled workers that Hong Kong lacks. Mr. President, our labor importation schemes are actually opening our doors wide. At present, if an employer wants to import labor, he can apply under the present mechanism. So we don't need to expand the existing schemes. The consultation document mentions the construction industry, catering business, healthcare industry, etc., which face labor shortage. Our overall workforce is only 61.5% of our overall population. The government has to understand the situation in these trades and industries. Why is there shortage labor? Does our society have our own solutions to solve the problem to assist the healthy development of the labor market? Mr. Lee Chuck Yan's amendment mentioned options for releasing workforce. I support them. I hope that the government can study them seriously. If we casually and randomly import labor, we won't be addressing the problem correctly. 
rather will be adding fuel to fire. So we strongly oppose importing labor. Thank you. Mr. Frankie Yick. President, the current unemployment rate is about 3.3%. It's not just um, close to full employment. We are actually having a shortage of labor because of the low birth rate and also because of the low academic uh, uh, because of the rising education standards, so for the so-called blue-collar job types and also for the frontline grassroots uh, jobs, uh, nobody is interested. That's why, as a result of that, uh, we do have a shortage of labor, and uh, the overall manpower supply is not able to catch up with the demand in the market. And in the long run, that would be detrimental to Hong Kong's uh, competitiveness and economic growth, and uh, for jobs requiring longer working hours and also which are uh, more labor intensive, uh, they are having difficulty hiring helping hands with fewer younger people joining the trades. Uh, we do have this uh, problem, for example, the construction sector catering, allied health professionals, and also the uh, and also shipping, transport, and logistics center or logistics uh, industry that I represent. Uh, they are having difficulties, and the administration is now proposing that we should increase our importation of labor. And in terms of importation of labor, it's nothing new to Hong Kong. In the past and um, at present, with regard to the importation of labor policy, it doesn't mean that uh, we're going to import as many workers as we like, and we are also not blindly importing workers. In fact, the policy objective is to give priority to local workers, and where there is obvious shortfall in certain sectors, we will be uh, importing workers on a limited scale. I think that's a very important principle, and if we just uh, object to the importation of labor across the board, that's irrational, and that's also not going to help solve the problem of shortage of labor. I hope that those from the labor sector will understand that uh, the Liberal Party and the business sector are proposing that we should import labor appropriately. That's because um, we, we really need certain um, labor in some sectors. It's not that uh, we are against uh, labor interests. In fact, even if we were to um, provide a subsistence allowance uh, to the imported workers, the cost would not be lower than hiring a local worker. We are not trying to suppress the wages. We are actually trying to meet the needs of certain sectors, or else we will see um, a loss of business, uh, and it's about uh, the sustainability of our economic development. We have uh, hundreds of thousands of families hiring foreign domestic helpers, Filipino maids, Indonesian maids, and Thai maids, and they've been able to release a lot of manpower who can then go out to work. And uh, for various uh, trades and professions, they are actually providing the much needed uh, manpower. And therefore, importation of labor or importation of a uh, foreign domestic helper is also an importation of foreign labor uh, policy, and it's been very effective. And also, before the reunification, we also have the Rosy Garden uh, project, that's the uh, Chalap Kok Airport project, and also the 10 ma major infrastructure project. And under those schemes, we have also imported a lot of workers, and as a result, we managed to finish them very smoothly. And uh, the 10 core infrastructure projects uh, will also need a lot of helping hands. And also, in terms of housing, we need to uh, provide some 470,000 units in order to meet the housing needs of the um, residents here, and without imported workers, wages will continue to rise, and uh, the construction costs will continue to rise, and uh, price, property prices will only go up, and we will also not be able to meet the targets for rare sectors, and for those on the waiting list, they will once again be disappointed, and as a result, uh, there will be a public uh, outcry, and if we are not able to complete some projects in a timely manner, that will also have a negative impact on Hong Kong's competitiveness. Mr. President, our neighboring places, for example, Singapore and Macau, because of shortage of labor and also economic uh, situation, they've also imported workers, and that has not affected uh, the employment situation of local workers, and uh, local workers' rights both have not been crashed. And also, if you look at uh, uh, Singapore, the unemployment rate was only 1.8% uh, in the third quarter, and in Macau, it's about 1.9%. Uh, so basically, it's close to full employment. And in Singapore, they have uh, over 880,000 for foreign workers, accounting for some 28% of, of the population. And um, in Macau, some 80,000 of them are foreign workers, and that will account for 26% of the population. And Singapore's experience should be something that we can model after. And Singapore will also look at uh, the monthly wages and different work visas will be issued in order to control the importation of low-skilled workers. 
And also for different job types, they would also come up with a ratio between local workers and foreign workers. For example, when manufacturers hire uh, foreign workers, it should be four to six. In other words, if they want to hire four foreign workers, they will have to hire six local workers. So in Hong Kong, well, according to the government's projections, uh, by 2018, for um, for man, human uh, human resource in different uh, sectors, there will be a serious uh, shortfall, and therefore I'm concerned. In the transport sector, there have been long-standing problem, and also for car repair and so on, we do lack new blood. And also for uh, aircraft repair, is renowned because uh, our work has been efficient, our quality is superb, and many companies or airlines would choose to have their aircraft uh, repair and maintained here. But then, if you look at the recruitment objective or target, we're talking about several hundred to several thousand. But then because of the difficulty in hiring skilled hands, many of the airlines have chosen to Singapore have, have chosen to go to Singapore to repair their aircraft and that would also affect Hong Kong's status as a, a, an aviation hub. And also because of cross boundary transport, because uh, there needs to be clearance and therefore the working hours are not, not stable and therefore they normally have to work longer working hours and it's difficult to attract new blood. And then if you look at the age, at the age profile uh, of the drivers is about is over 50 and uh, we do have a shortage of some 20 30 percent of the total workforce in that and also we need some 20,000 drivers but then we are actually short of some 10 percent and for GMBs because the wages are relatively low and the situation is even worse but within the trade we've been joking that uh, well, if you just uh, get three people driving uh, GMBs, and if you ask their age, and if uh, the three added together will definitely be over 200. And in terms of the shipping sector, it's also very bad. In the past, uh, some of the fishermen, because they would like to go on, uh, go go, um, they would like to uh, work on land. That's why they would be willing to join the trade. But then uh, many of them are very old already, and um, no, uh, and uh, very few young people would be prepared to join the profession and recently we have just uh, relaxed the age limit uh, for pilots and and, uh, and also navigate navigators you will understand the problem and if we are not able to import labor how can we face uh, competition in the market at meetings many officials would say that uh, well for individual sectors yes we are still uh, able to hire extra hands but then uh, how many vacancies are there and how many have they been able to recruit? For example, there are 3,000 vacancies. If they are only able to hire 30, how can that be enough? And I've also said that uh, without new blood joining the uh, sectors, we're actually having the same pool of people serving in different sectors. All right, I might be headhunting somebody from a, a different sector. And then if he wants to leave, then I'll have to increase his wages before I can keep him. And then for the individual sectors, because they are not able to afford that, then they will not be able to increase the wages in order to recruit someone from the other sector. And therefore, for company D, uh, that the worker might become might lose his job, and in the end, he will have to get a job that um, would offer lower wages. Do we want to see that happen? Well, if you look at uh, the population policy paper, it um, asks questions on uh, whether or not we should import labor, and it's a directional question. But then I think we should look at uh, the sustainability of our economy. We should look at it from that perspective. We should not exaggerate the problem. These are my remarks. Dr. An Chen. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. In recent years, Hong Kong people uh, or the Hong Kong population has a low birth rate and the population is aging fast and it is expected that uh, the uh, labor workforce will continue to shrink uh, starting from uh, 2015 and the dwindling labor force will cause a severe labor shortage and the tax revenue will be reduced and uh, some jobs will uh, be uh, taken up and in the long run it will affect our economy earlier. The administration puts forward a proposal to import labor effectively and since then there have been uh, wide repercussions in the community with manpower mismatch is importation of labor a solution. Let's look at what happens around the world. Different places have different labor policies in response to the economic development. In Taiwan, the foreign labors uh, 
are divided into uh, industrial labor and also labor for social services. The laborers, um, as uh, industrial laborers, are for manufacturing industries, whereas for social services, these laborers are tasked to look after elderly people with mobility problems. As at the end of April 2013, foreign labor um, accounted for uh, 45,000 in Taiwan. Uh, as far as uh, the industrial labor laborers concerned, and uh, also 200,000 for uh, the social services sector. Whereas in Hong Kong, we have a number of infrastructure projects com commencing, and uh, uh, in ho we have hotel development, and there is a shortage of labor. And the Singapore government requires a quota system be implemented, and the um, and um, the foreign labor, um, the employees for foreign laborers are required to pay um, a headcount test. And according to a survey, foreign labor accounts for over 30 percent of the total labor force. In the construction industry, seven out of ten workers are foreign workers, which means that Importing labor at an appropriate scale um, to tie in with economic development is appropriate. The development in Singapore is taking place rapidly. In 1997, GDP was 9.93 US billion, uh, billion US dollars, and Hong Kong 107, 160 billion then. However, Nowadays, Singapore's GDP stands at two hundred and fifty nine billion US dollars. What about Hong Kong? Two hundred and forty three billion dollars. Originally we were in the lead. However, now we're lagging behind. We used to be more than double. Uh, our competitor. That's exactly because the Singapore imported labor to help the economic development. What about labor importation in Hong Kong? In the 80s, when the manufacturing industries were um, developing rapidly and there was severe labor shortage, at that time the government was uh, unwilling to give the green light. And the factories um, then migrated to China in order to survive. However, they were reluctant in relocating the factories in the mainland because it would be very far away. Now, then on reaching the 90s, in 1989, the general employment policy was introduced. However, we understand that most of the factories had been relocated. They were forced to do so. So we can see that importation of labor might not be a bad thing. The most important thing is whether uh, there is such a need in Hong Kong. We have 320,000 foreign domestic helpers in Hong Kong. Uh, one out of uh, every 10 households have FDH, foreign domestic helpers. And I believe the majority would agree that FDH has made much contribution to our social and economic development in Hong Kong, releasing the potential uh, of uh, women into the labor force is necessary without FDH our women in society couldn 't work so over the past two or three decades, we saw more and more women participating in the labor force. But so far, the, uh, la the participation rate stands only at 46 percent, far lower than the 57 percent, um, far lower than the 68.7 percent for men. Now we have um, residential care homes and uh, other jobs uh, of an obnoxious nature that are not taken up by workers. 
And when we go to housing estates, sometimes we hear um, cleaners telling us that her son uh, might be studying in a um, in a university, or uh, the daughter might be in a certain profession. We uh, for say, for example, for the graveyard shift in the residential care homes for uh, workers um, blasting tunnels, and for the so-called three Ds, uh, di difficult, dirty, and dangerous jobs. It's very hard to recruit workers. Against this backdrop, we should consider importing labor. Apart from labor importation, the administration can also consider and, in fact, give priority to alleviating labor shortage. Over the um, in recent years, we have the three uh, railways. We have uh, Hong Kong Zhuhai, Macau Bridge, and the Express Rail Link. All these infrastructure projects have commenced, and there is a severe shortage in the construction industry as a result of these projects. If the government had um, planned well in advance by collaborating with the sector, as far as manpower is concerned, then we would not have had this manpower shortage. Perhaps we can face the projects so that they won't concentrate that during a certain time period and to avoid labor shortage. Also, I'd like the administration to think really hard and encourage the business sector to provide more part-time jobs for housewives. Some companies might have uh, child care facilities. Some uh, the, uh, families might not have children um, that needs to be looked after all the time. Housewives still need to spend time taking care of the families. So part-time jobs might be more attractive to those women. And on the whole, the DAB is of the view that the government should ensure um, local uh, workers uh, have been given the priority, and also to uh, implement family-friendly policies and uh, to uh, provide better conditions for uh, local employer uh, employees, and also to release uh, the uh, un or unleash unleash the potential, and also um, with the consensus of the labor advisory board, and only by having this consensus can labor importation be implemented on the four. Amendments. The DAB is going to abstain uh, from um, voting uh, these uh, amendments. Mr. Frankie Yick is asking for uh, importing labor as soon as possible. And uh, for other members like Mr. Lee Chuck Yen, their amendments are about uh, op opposing the expansion of labor importation. And the DAB thinks that uh, lab labor importation should be carried out cautiously. So their positions differ from ours. We think that a, a prudent and cautious approach should be taken uh, as far as expansion of labor importation is concerned. Please support my amendment. Thank you. Mr. Lee Chuck Yen. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. Today, we, uh, this motion is on opposing the importation the expansion of labor importation. We didn't have to talk about it because it is never on the agenda. But then now, with the publication of this um, document, we have to talk about it. Actually, the title of this um, consultation document is Neutral Thoughts for Hong Kong Public Engagement Exercise in on Population Policy. It says inside is people based. But having read the entire consultation document, I think it's um, business based. This whole document is just to tell the business sector. That uh, we've heard you about the shortage of labor, so we're going to talk about the population policy and people are to serve is um, the economy. So that's your ma ma mindset. There's no mention of quality of living. We don't think about it. We, we they just considering okay, we don't have enough people to do the work, um, and instead of thinking about what do we do about the quality of living in Hong Kong and our working hours are so long, you know people are. Uh, uh, um, um, 
absolutely drained. There's no time for, uh, for personal activities. No, we're not talking about that. We're just talking about okay, we can't support our economic development. So it's a narrow-minded. It has no regard uh, to the people. This is the kind of policy document we see. So it, it's no longer like that. Rather, this is what it is in reality. What? How do we help the bosses to suppress wages? That's the question in mind. Of course, uh, just now, Frankie Yeager wouldn't admit that this whole labor importation scheme is to suppress wages. And um, uh, to say importing labor, this is just to tell bosses that uh, we've hurt you. So this whole thing is not about population policy. Rather, it's about um, importation of labor. And, uh, you know, that makes us wonder why do you have to put up such a show for that? Um, why do you have to elevate it to such a high level of um, policy, population policy when all you have in mind is importing labor? That's the whole purpose of the document. It's just to tell bosses, I've hurt you, I've hurt you. Well, what, what's wrong with this government? I think uh, Matthew Jones should just go home to take care of his grandchildren. I, I wish you do that very soon for your own good. I think for Matthew Chung, Job matching is tough, but uh, importation of labor is straightforward, quick and easy. So this whole document is just to tell you that for the other questions, they're just there, you know, um, as a gesture. And uh, Carrie Jane Lam, when he came, when she came here, she said for um, jobs uh, matching and other um, employment support policies, we just to hear your views. We don't have a, any position on that. But how come for those other issues you don't have a position? Now for importation of labor, you claim you don't have a position, but actually you have in this document. Because in the document you're saying that uh, we should uh, make reference to the approach of importing foreign domestic helpers to see how we could uh, import labor more effectively. That's what is said in this document. You could check. We don't know why they put it this way. So it's obvious. If you say you want to make reference to the importation of foreign domestic helpers, that means you want to import more. There are already 300,000 foreign domestic helpers here. Is that what you mean? But here you are specific. So you are preparing to import labor. So we shouldn't be talking about uh, labor importation, actually, in relation to this issue. But now that's what it's all about. And the position of the labor uh, party and the CDU is, straight, is um, clear. Uh, this is just... Um, taking poison to stop your thirst, but it won't stop your thirst, actually. It's like uh, taking drugs. The more you import labor, you will just discourage more people from coming out to join the workforce. And you, you don't try to address uh, the, uh, to, to re, uh, uh, target the reasons why they're not coming out to work. Instead, you're just importing more labor. So these people will definitely not come out to work. And that's not the right approach. You have put uh, the cart before the horse. You say we cannot release potential la uh, labor productivity, so, so let's just import labor. That's what you're saying. Of course, that's a side effect of labor importation, and Frankie Yick wouldn't admit that. Uh, he doesn't admit that it's about suppressing wages, but importing labor is definitely going to suppress wages. And it's so much easier to uh, bend the rules, uh, like the um, homes for the elderly. Now, the, the labor is imported on medium wage, but at night, you ask them to do two hours of work for free. So it's like free overtime work. And then uh, the people eventually get upset. They, they ask us to pursue the wages. But uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg, this sort of cases, you know, bending the rules. I don't know how many such cases there are, in, actually. It's like the uh, air port uh, imported labor. It's also about just... Um, bending the rules, and then there was a, select, uh, a special committee in Lesh Group then to see how we could prevent people from bending the rules. So labor importation will only harm the interest of local workers. Of course, the secretary is going to claim, no, even if we import labor, we're not going to hurt the interests of local workers. Uh, okay, you say that, but you never care about the interests of um, local workers. You won't even do standard working hours. I haven't even set a score with you on that. Now, about this whole policy of importing labor, at the end, many people will lose interest in uh, coming out to work. Um, you're just uh, taking away job opportunities from them. 
But anyway, I don't want to talk about labor importation. Here I'm talking about releasing the pro, uh, labor, the potential labor force. Uh, I think we sh shouldn't talk about um, labor importation. We should talk about how we could release the potential in Hong Kong. Now, women's participation rate, participation rate in uh, labor force, 49.8 percent, less than 50 percent is very, uh, the very low level. Finland is 80 percent. And 530,000 women aged between 34 and 49, they don't come out to work. 550,000. So even if we take a percent of that figure, that means 30,000 people. 5 percent, 550,000 people. So can you boost that percentage? Well, I don't they come out of work. We all know why. We all know for women, child care services and after school care services are insufficient. That's why they cannot come out to work. Now, um, Dr. Helena uh, Wong has already um, um, you know, asked a question. Now, in child care centers, um, there are just 400 centers to cater to the 0.3% uh, of the age group. Community um, child uh, carers, uh, they don't even earn a minimum wage. And the secretary said uh, he had a great, he enjoyed doing voluntary service. Well, for you, maybe. So for these people, you're not helping them to join the workforce. Another uh, obvious reason is, of course, the working hours are so long. Now, if you don't go for family friendly employment, Practices now it's mentioned here, but you're not doing anything, and you're not um, all you're not uh, implementing standard working hours. You drag it on for three years. You always say uh, flexible working hours. What do you mean flexible? Whenever people work, it's twelve is a twelve hour day. You ask them, Tommy Jones just now, whether it's a twelve hour day in the catering industry. So it has to be tw at least twelve hours. In that case. You can't expect women to come out to work. And then you complain women won't have children. Of course they won't have children. There are so many other problems. I won't even mention that, but you might, they have housing problems. And the, but this long working hours, a uh, serious issue, is definitely not friend, family friendly. There's another group. Between 50 and 64, 240,000 claim that they have retired. They don't need to retire. Frankie Yeg tried to depict these people as really old. Pay 50 to 64 years of age, why can't they work? They can work. So you could release the potential of this group and encourage them to rejoin the workforce. Uh, for example, the um, Air Stewardess Union just had a meeting. They are made to retire at 55, some at 49 or 45. Why don't you change the retirement age? I think we should legislate uh, against um, age discrimination. If they want to stay on, they should stay on. And civil servants also, they could defer their retirement age, especially for the Mod 1 staff, Model Scale 1 staff. They have no um, dispute. They, they would like their retirement age to be de deferred. For people with disabilities, out of 430,000, only 45,000 have jobs. It's because the government uh, or the public subvented organizations don't have any quota or target. You should say 2% of the staff. As for private um, sector, you could give them incentives. Perhaps um, the differential of the minimum wage could be paid by the government, but the government could do it, but it's not doing anything. So it's not doing anything, it just takes the easiest way out, that is to import labor. That's why we're against it. Secretary for Labor and Welfare. Mr. Deputy. I thank Mr. Kowaiko for moving today's motion. And I also thank the four members. They are Mr. Pun Siu Ping, Mr. Frankie Yik, Mr. Lee Chok Yan, and Ms. An Chang for, for the amendments. The Steering Committee on Population Policy re um, released the consultation document on the 24th of October, which kick started the four month public engagement exercise. Um, of a pop population policy consultation. And it is estimated that in the coming 30 years, that there will be a rapid aging population in Hong Kong. In the document, there are some policy directions proposed. 
An aging population will result in a labor force participation rate, which stands uh, which stood at 58.8% in 2012, and it will decrease to 49.5% in uh, 2041. We reckon that our labor force will reach a peak in 2018 at 3.71 million people, and then it will drop to 3.51 million in 2035. Thereafter, there will be only mild increase. For certain industries, there is manpower shortage. With a dwindling um, population, the direct impact is a, is a slackened uh, economic growth, which, in, which impact on job opportunities and living standards. And on top of that, because of our narrow tax base, the an aging population will narrow it further. And this um, an aging population will add to health care and social welfare expenditure. The steering committee proposes five ways to deal with uh, the challenges. First, to increase the quantity of the labor force by drawing more people into the labor market. We should remove the barriers to work for our people. The second way is to enhance the quality of the labor force by improving education and training and minimizing skills mismatch. We should equip our people with skills that can support our future economic de development. The third way is to build up our human capital with a more proactive policy and targeted approach to attract more talent from overseas and the mainland. We should also consider a more effective importation of labor system without jeopardizing the interests of local workers. The fourth direction is to have fo to focus the communi community discussion on effective measures in the Hong Kong context to remove barriers to childbearing and how the caregiving responsibility of families can be assisted by government and community efforts. And the last one is to tap the valuable pool of elderly resources to create new impetus to the economic and social development of our community through building an age-friendly environment and promote active aging and the development of silver hair market. The administration fully understand members' concern on the third point, that is, to consider a more effective importation of labor system without jeopardizing the interests of local workers. From the wordings of the amendments, I can see that um, in different sectors there are different aspirations and different comments. In fact, the focus of the consultation paper is to is on local human resources. I emphasize local human resources, and this, this is something that we will accord priority. And we have we will find out how to uh, release a local uh, a labor and let them play to their full potential. They these include training and retraining to equip and attract youngsters, women, retirees, persons with disabilities, PWDs, and ethnic minorities to join the labor force. In the second and the third chapter in the uh, consultation paper, it deals with uh, problems of our local population and ways to deal with it. And it's the, in the fourth chapter, we talk about importation of labor. And then in the fifth and the sixth chapter, we talk about other problems. The administration has on a number of occasions emphasized that uh, there are three major, uh, three basic premises. That is, we will not jeopardize the interest of local workers, we will not suppress local wages, and we will not deprive local workers of job opportunities. And it's only under these premises that we will explore more effective importation of labor system. In relation to the importation of labor, the administration has no decided options or timetable. We will first release and uh, make full use of a potential labor force in the local market to defer uh, retirement age and other measures uh, to deal with uh, manpower shortage. We will take into account Hong Kong's um, actual need um, before we consider importation of um, professionals and low-skilled workers. I hope that 
before the end of the consultation period on the 23rd of February, uh, there will be discussions in a pragmatic way and to find to forge a consensus so that we can create a win-win situation. Mr. Tommy Chang. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. Mr. Matthew Chang uh, recently has said a lot, but uh, what is, uh, mo is music to my ears uh, is his uh, current speech. Uh, Mr. Li Chang asked me whether the catering industry workers work for 12 hours. No, no more than 12 hours, uh, not 12 hours because we really um, can't get enough bodies, um, less than 12 hours. Mr. Kun Xiu Ping regards 150 uh, workers imported as, um, foreign, as um, importation of labor, and Mr. Ko Wai Kung um, put the blame of occupational safety uh, on us, and that's really unreasonable. In 2001, um, 11,000 um, industrial ac accidents, and then um, the industrial accident declined by 40 percent. There were only 7,000 um, Accidents. Now you said that uh, the um, salaries were were less than uh, several years ago. Look at those who wash dishes. We cannot get uh, enough people by paying eighteen thousand. We are paying twenty thousand dollars to get somebody to wash dishes. Ten years ago, we didn't pay that much. Now you each have your own position, but please do not frame the SMEs and blame them for. Exploitation and, they, and because they um, they exploit workers and there there are high uh, there is high industrial accident, therefore there are few people want to go join the catering industry. That's not true. The catering industry uh, is not able to substantially raise salaries to uh, grab more workers. Um, no matter how we improve the working conditions, those who wash dishes cannot have working conditions better than a watchman or caretaker, and the salary of those washing dishes cannot be as high as a bar bender. The uh, restaurants switch to using plastic um, utensils and also uh, disposable utensils, and that will only do away with uh, people who wash dishes. And many SMEs are uh, already making losses, and they only rely on their cash flow. If you ask these SMEs to raise salaries, how much can they raise? Now, Hong Kong is having full employment. No matter how high uh, wages are raised, um, they are competing. The employers are just competing for the same pool of workers. Yesterday, some called uh, uh, to a radio um, program and said why those who wash dishes cannot be hired and the, the cook. Now, in the United States, a plumber uh, had a salary um, higher than that of a professor many years ago. Um, but uh, if salaries are substantially increased, uh, prices would also substantially increase. Uh, a McDonald meal in the United States charge about seventy Hong Kong dollars equivalent. With the rise in salaries, overall costs will increase. Can the grassroots bear that? Young people have many uh, channels of further studies. They don't want to get into low skill work. Uh, time has changed. Young people of my uh, of my age. Uh, had their big brothers and sisters went out to work. They uh, might uh, wash dishes or uh, uh, sell dim sums so that their younger brothers and sisters uh, could study in universities. But now many are going into the universities. Many are studying sub-degree courses. Uh, where do we get the people to wash dishes? Some are concerned that importation of labor will only undermine the buying power of local workers, but. The importation of labor is based on the median income, median wage of that uh, job category. The employers cannot use excessive low pay to recruit uh, imported workers, and there are also a suitable protection given to imported workers. Shortage of labor will not uh, be, in fact, favorable to local workers. Uh, so shortage of uh, hands in the labor market will not be good for uh, ordinary workers because they may have to work longer hours. And 
yesterday some uh, made a telephone call and said that uh, uh, the the caller said that he he wanted to go to um, pursue to study after work, but uh, the boss didn't allow. Uh, this is because there aren't enough workers, and if there are enough workers uh, to um, deploy, then some people can uh, pursue further studies after work. Now, big and uh, medium enterprises can make use of central kitchen to uh, reduce the demand for labor, but SMEs cannot do that. The shortage of labor um, causes different uh, problems, and they are interrelated. In the long term, uh, they will only undermine Hong Kong's com competitiveness, uh, scale away investors. Now, the trade union representatives say that there is already a mechanism to fill up the gaps in the shortage local uh, labor market. But the so-called uh, importation scheme is unfair. We don't have enough cokes. Now, a Spanish investor wants to get a coke uh, to uh, coke paella, uh, but um, the Labor Department doesn't allow that. There is no such coke in Hong Kong. And with the uh, shortage of labor, um, in dealing with uh, job uh, types of jobs which require low skill and few uh, new en which have few entrants, we should import labor to fill those vacancies, and we should develop high value added jobs for our young people. In the 70s, when there were no domestic helpers, we imported foreign domestic helpers, and when foreign domestic helpers uh, came, they released um, the homemakers into the labor market. Now, some say there is little training opportunities for young people in the catering industry. Should we not impose um, the uh, uh, washer people, people to wash dishes and also the waitresses, waiters and waitresses? Uh, I think so, so that young people can have time for further studies. Uh, time, my time is uh, running up. Uh, apart from the uh, point raised by Ms. Chang and also a point mentioned by uh, the secretary, uh, I can't find other. Uh, Opinions acceptable. Ms. Claudia Mo. The original motion is opposing the expansion of labor importation. The emphasis was on expansion. Importation of foreign labor is the fact, and there is a mechanism. And only it is only said, uh, it is said that only talents are imported, but that is still a mechanism. Mr. Tommy Chung keeps saying that uh, there are difficulties to get enough. Workers, I don't think that is not the fact. In fact, many industries are claiming that they find it difficult to uh, get enough workers. But if you look at the original motion, now it says that uh, we, um, we um, um, the council opposes the expansion because that will undermine the bargaining power of local workers. Now you say that we have to um, accommodate the uh, special situation that can be considered uh, for a short period, uh, and that can only be allowed for a short period of time. But if there is a large scale expansion of importation of worker, then we are afraid. Now, technically speaking, that is protectionism. But, but we are talking about giving priority to local people. They. Local workers should be given the priority. If there is available labor force, if there is available manpower, then uh, priority should be given to local uh, workers. Uh, Mr. Franklin Lam, a former EXCO member, uh, said yesterday that in the coming 20 years, Hong Kong needed uh, to um, import 200,000 foreign uh, workers. He was a former, he is a former EXCO member. I don't know whether he represents the government uh, position. Now, he uh, says that the present arrangement cannot attract talents. But what kind of talents do they want? Uh, Mr. Tommy Chang wants to have, uh, employ a Spanish cook uh, to do paella in Hong Kong, but this is this is not allowed. What kind of talents are they asking? You've read newspaper reports. There is a new National Security Committee 
Do you want to get special agents? Do you want to recruit something like uh, somebody like KGBs? Uh, and the uh, Hong Kong police is only responsible for local security and safety. In the future, um, we have to look after national security. Therefore, we may need to import a special team of talents. From 1997 up till now, 800,000 new immigrants have arrived in Hong Kong. Let us don't distinguish between new Hong Kongers and old Hong Kongers. That's meaningless. After they have arrived, they are Hong Kong people. They take their roots here. In 2011, the latest is called, the number of new immigrants participating in local labor market is less than 50%, just 47.8%. Why is it so? There are many homemakers and uh, students. Now, many of the homemakers who are women uh, do want to work, but I really find it uh, rather uh, hard to accept. Now, you say that homemakers do not participate in economic activities. They are not part of the labor force. The new generation economists will say differently. A mother, a homemaker, who doesn't work in the market, but you say uh, that she doesn't engage in economic activity. But in fact, she does engage in economic activity. It's uh, home economics, and she is part of the labor force because she's working every day at home. Let us don't argue over that. Under the present situation, the fact is that they do want to go out to work. Um, through characters of uh, Chin Wan, I come to know quite a lot of new uh, immigrant, new immigrants. Uh, one came to visit me uh, with her baby uh, to look at um, the new uh, government headquarter buildings. She wanted to uh, work. She wanted to go to work on work sites. Uh, I mentioned, uh, I reminded her that she had to study. She had to. Uh, get certificates before she uh, could work on a work site. But if, uh, if she didn't work on work sites, uh, she could go to wash dishes. And it is said that uh, it's difficult to get people to wash dishes. She uh, lives in Tin Sui Wai, uh, Mr. Secretary. Say, uh, country club in Wong Chuk Kang is not able to get a uh, some uh, staff to uh, wash dishes, then how can uh, the lady living in Tin Shui Wai to travel to Wang Chuk Hang to wash dishes? Now, in the uh, written reply and also uh, oral reply, there, there are WITS, uh, childcare service, and also subsidy for ethnic minorities. But it's all official lease. The answer is empty. You, you say you do your best. What about child care service? Well, the community nanny pro project is still is effective on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, they can help, uh, but the um, the pay for the community nanny is um, ca is um, counted when they um, receive CSSA, and it will be uh, or rather it will be taken out. As for ethnic minorities. Uh, Pakistan, Pakistan uh, girl says that she wants to study uh, a beautician course, uh, but everything is taught in Chinese, but she doesn't know how to read Chinese. Si Wai Leung, in his electoral path, uh, platform, uh, said that uh, he uh, would um, set up um, courses uh, in Chinese as a secondary, uh, as a second language for the ethnic minorities. But where is his promise? As for civil servants, less than 1% are ethnic minorities. Thank you. Mr. Jeffrey Lam, Mr. Deputy, last week I read an editorial on labor importation. It describes it not as a monster and says that the issue should be studied seriously. That's the voice in the mind of the SME bosses. 
We just had a public consultation document on our population policy. In that document, it is said that our population may age quicker than expected. In 2018, after reaching a peak, our population will decline. We can see that our next generations will have to sustain more elderly people. And the aging population will bring a very heavy economic burden onto the younger generations. We should not sit there and do nothing. The Steering Committee on Population Policy has asked us, or the government, to consider in industries with labor shortage, like a construction industry, retail industry, catering business, and medical and health care profession, bring in foreign labor. The construction industry and the health care industry are disastrous. For the construction industry, we are to have a lot of housing projects and a few major infrastructure projects are to commence. Land formation and all sorts of construction works are to flourish. According to the Construction Industry Council, just for this year, there are already 10,000 vacancies. We don't have sufficient workers. In fact, various industries are competing amongst themselves for labor. If we want to build a lot of housing units, but at the same time we don't want to import labor, that's quite impossible. I'm concerned about another aspect. If there's a manpower shortage and works projects are to start, quality problems as well as industrial safety may be undermined. In the past few years, the later the infrastructure and works projects commence, the higher the cost will be. If we do not face the problem squarely, we'll be adding to the burden of the government and the public. Now look at the healthcare industry. The Hong Kong Council of Civil Service, oh sorry, Hong Kong Council of Social Service discovered that there was a shortage of 1,000 people, 2%. And many healthcare workers are over 50 years old. That means in the next few years, we'll have the retirement peak. So, manpower supply will be tight. I have a friend, the family of which has been operating elderly homes. But given this manpower shortage, they would like to close their business prematurely. But when we mention labor importation, many friends of the labor sector will oppose. They're afraid that labor importation may break the rice bowls of many local employees. Yes, Hong Kong government should give priority to the protection of local workers. But in certain industries, there are jobs with not enough workers. The retirees retire. There are no new entrants. As a responsible government, the SERG has to face the problem squarely. It should actively study how, without undermining the interest of local workers, import foreign labor. For a long, long time, certain industries and trades have been in short of manpower, like the elderly homes and the retail industry and the construction industry. So we should effectively and efficiently import labor for these trades and industries. Look at our neighboring jurisdictions and you see we are very different from them. Of course, I'm not saying that Hong Kong should copy fully from other jurisdictions, but SARG can model on the labor importation scheme before 1997 on building the Chaklapkok Airport so we can import labor for the production of HOS flats and PRH flats. It is worthwhile also to improve the conditions of service of local workers. Last year, there are 60,000 government jobs through the supplementary labor importation scheme only about 2,000 foreign workers were imported. 
This precisely reflects that the supplementary scheme needs to be reviewed. I also heard from many employers that the supplementary labor importation scheme has very complicated procedures. So there's a lack of flexibility, and the fetching time has been long. It's not helpful to assist them to alleviate the manpower shortage problem. Well, for importing labor, it is not a zero-sum game. We're not. We should not say that the employers are definitely to lose out and the employees will win. With the labor shortage, in the long run, Hong Kong's competitiveness will be affected. And the employment situation in Hong Kong will also be affected. So I hope that various sectors of the community can take this opportunity of public consultation to discuss less about theories and try to reduce the discrepancies amongst different sectors of the community. It's strange that Ms. Claudia Mo mentioned the importation of secret agents like the KGB. But these people don't need to be imported under a labor importation scheme because without anybody knowing, they will sneak into Hong Kong. So she doesn't need to worry about that. I think she has thought too much about this problem. So she has gone astray in her thoughts. I have a Filipino maid, and my company may also apply for importing labor. Thank you. Mr. Chang Kwok Chi. Mr. Deputy, last month the government announced this public consultation document on population policy. As expected, the administration would like to take this as an excuse to import labor. Earlier this year, in a Q&A session for the CE, Mr. Vincent Fang asked the CE whether labor would be imported. The CE said that without affecting priorities for local workers, labor importation could be considered. We felt an alarm there. Well, there's this proposal for expanding the labor importation scheme. I think the government and the business sector have joined hands in pegging labor importation with housing production programs. That means in order to build a lot of housing units, it's essential to import labor. The supply and demand figures provided by the government sound correct. As, the la mem as a member of the labor sector, I have to analyze whether those figures were correct and whether those figures had been inflated. Now, we have to clarify a number of fundamental principles. Demographic structure experts and scholars have all along been reminding us that one of the main cause of labor shortage is mismatch. The HOS program has been shelved or suspended for 10 years. So building programs have been tightened, so a lot of construction workers went to Macau to seek alternative outlets. Yes, there are training programs, but young people are uncertain about the prospect of the construction industry, so they dare not enter the trade. And just in recent times, the government revived housing production programs, and once again were in shortage of labor. For housing, medical, education, social welfare and industries, the government must have long-term planning. Before we can resolve this problem of mismatch between jobs and labor, and then for a long, long time, workers are not well protected. Take, for example, the recent container port industrial action. Many people find the work life of those working in container ports very inhuman. So nobody wants to join. The basic livelihood and dignity of our workers must be safeguarded. And this is crucial if we want to encourage young people to join. Labor importation is a short-sighted proposal. It's just like the individual visit scheme. You get an injection and boost your energy, but in the end, the overall health of your body is undermined. Well, these imported labor may retire 
very quickly. And forever, the grassroots of our society have to bear the brunt. And in recent times in society, there's this popular saying, after 20 years, we now have 300,000 foreign domestic helpers in Hong Kong. It's said that the existence of these foreign domestic helpers has helped to release the labor force of our women. So labor importation does have a positive effect. Economically, this sounds logical. But why do some families need foreign domestic helpers? Why is it that the parents of 300,000 households of Hong Kong have to go out to work very early and go home late? Why do they have to work overtime during weekends before they can earn enough to pay for the high commodity prices? Why do they have to employ foreign domestic helpers to cook and do laundry at home? Why don't they have time to play with their children in parks and gardens? So our locals, the victims or beneficiaries of this labor importation scheme, ask our social workers, they'll tell you families don't need a foreign domestic helper. What they need is to be able to work and live in peace. They need opportunities to grow with their children. They should not need somebody else to nurture the children for them. In the eyes of the government, the labor force of society is released, but the result is that more wealth is created for the business sector. Many families are sacrificed as a result, and we have a lot of social problems, and society has to pay a high price. So don't repeat this ignorant theory of arriving at a win-win situation with labor importation. Professor Nelson Chow in social administration has this criticism which has hit the nail on his head. He said the public consultation document is not a document on economic growth. We cannot simplify the matter by viewing the person as productivity. We have to look at the quality of our people in order to have sustainable development. Professor Chow is concerned about social structure. How can we create a good living environment in society? I very much share his views. To import labor or talents and professionals, I have to say that these imported labor may not have a sense of belonging to Hong Kong, but at the same time, they create social conflicts. We have over 30,000 people between 15 to 29 years old that are not employed. If we have better vocational training, better wage protection, better working environment, if we can assist the unemployed to rejoin the labor market, if we can absorb young people into the infrastructure projects, then the labor market can be revived and the unemployment and youth de development problems can also be addressed. Then we'll arrive at a win-win result for Hong Kong society. With these remarks, I oppose the expansion of the labor importation scheme. Thank you. Ms. Chen Yun Han, thank you, Mr. Deputy. Mr. Deputy, this document is entitled Thoughts for Hong Kong. I think it's a little stealthy. Why do I say that it's stealthy? Because they are not really getting the collective wisdom of our community. They just uh, uh, have this preconceived idea that we would like to import labor. Well, looking at this paper, you see that uh, what they are trying to lead us to is that, all right, we have shortage of labor here and there. And at the same time, they've also talked about uh, workforce. And uh, apparently, um, they are very um, reasonable, but then they have never said that, uh, well, they, they just said that uh, we have to look into the feasibility of importing labor. So they sound neutral. But then they are just uh, trying to hide uh, the sort uh, that is uh, above the head of many workers. That is, uh, they're going to import labor. I think uh, in doing so, I think it's quite a failure. Bureau Director, I say it's a complete failure. Why? That's because, as we can see now, let me try and analyze the substance of this document. 
All right, you say that we have a shortfall of uh, 70,000 workers, so apparently um, the, everything will collapse because without the imported workers, we are not going to make ends meet. But then we do have 134,000 people unemployed. We also have some 57,000 people who are underemployed. And in the construction sector, for one job, we are talking about 13 candidates being interviewed for one job, so only one will succeed. So how about the other 12? Uh, is it that uh, they are not up to the score? In fact, uh, they are just uh, competing for lower wages. In fact, we do have many experienced workers, and yet uh, they have difficulty finding jobs. So many workers are complaining about this. Bureau Director, listen carefully. All right, you talk about uh, a potential of some 2 million jobs available. But then uh, they haven't really looked into that. Well, last time when Carrie Lam was here, attending the House Committee meeting, well, she asked me to give her more details. But then when we discussed that, in fact, for the past 10 years or so, we've been talking about helping, helping the women to work. And uh, there are many problems encountered by our workforce. And yet the administration often a time did not pay attention to that. They would just uh, come up with some uh, species, uh, schemes, for example, a community nanny or the neighborhood uh, um, uh, carer program and so on. Well, they would just uh, beat about the bush without looking at the forest. So they can see the trees, but not the forest. That's why I do have a lot of complaints to make. I think the administration if it really wants to resolve the problem, then why is it not working on some of the pressing problems? Why is it that uh, they try to circumvent the rules and just uh, come to this conclusion? I think for the 70,000 jobs and also 130 plus uh, 130,000 plus uh, unemployed, and still they are talking about a shortage of labor in this sector and in that sector. As we have said before, well, some of the labor unions uh, have said that, too. You have not faced up to the problem squarely. Well, Paul Chan said a few months ago, all right, in the construction sector, there is no shortage of labor. And then next week, CY said that, well, you will have to think about it. We may have to resort to this. So what is the government doing then? Well, they've been pressurized by the business sector, as Jeffrey Lam just said. Uh, regrettably, he's not here. I hope that uh, the BPA will be here. I hope that the Liberal Party will be here so that we can talk face to face about this. When we are talking about human resource training, when you talk about a mismatch, and also when you talk about excessively low wages, have you ever thought about the solutions? Well, many of the jobs would have been grabbed up by the uh, by those unemployed right away, but then they are not able to do so. And if we do not have an e have the energy to resolve these problems, then it's going to continue. I've been emphasizing this. Well, we do have some amendments um, today. All right, uh, Alice Mack will be talking about that later. I do have some com uh, comments to make on these amendments. All right, uh, within the FTU, we have to vote on these amendments. Well, apparently, some of the other lawmakers uh, are in support of us. They are against the uh, importation, importation of labor. So, um, but then they are trying to use different excuses, and then uh, they are asking the labor sector to take a step back. So they are asking us to make concessions, and even the administration is saying that, uh, all right, under the general employment policy, they can have an enhanced policy. So they are prepared to make changes to the GEP. But then, uh, as far as we are concerned, it's a no-go zone. Because once we are prepared to think about this, we would be making concessions so they would be able to import workers. That's why, well, uh, for those uh, who have amended uh, the wording of Kwok Wai Kang, I think they have some um, motive behind their amendment. That is that uh, the operators are having difficulties, and if they cannot afford the high wages, I think we that's because of the hegemony of uh, the developers. That's why for people running small businesses, they are having a lot of difficulties. So uh, as you can see, uh, other than the labor sector representatives, other amendments have crossed out these words. In fact, uh, objectively, if you ask the operators, we can see those figures. At, actually, I also talked about this last time at the forum. Well, 2013 and 2012, when you compare the situation, in fact, for the real, uh, for the uh, wage rise in real terms, uh, that was only by one percent. And also in 2013, if you look at, uh, well, Wen Chai, if you just look at Wen Chai, the rentals, if you look at the shopping center, is sixty-eight dollars per square feet, and that's 2003, and now it's over one hundred sixty dollars. So, 
have you looked at the situation with regard to rentals? Are you able to do something about it? Because these are the difficulties experienced by many operators. Why do you have to put the pressure on workers? So I think the administration have to be has to be pragmatic instead of just uh, saying that uh, the labor sector is um, really not uh, reasonable and. Uh, we are making things difficult for you. I think you're actually putting the blame on the workers and you're trying to suppress wages. You will have to deal with the problem squarely. I don't have time. I'll be talking about uh, uh, Bloomberg, the former uh, city mayor of New York. So when, when he attempted uh, to resolve the problem, he was able to achieve a win-win situation between the employers and the employees. I think this, the issue here is simple. The administration must face up to these. That is, we are faced with this situation, number one. You have to face up to the issue. You should, you must not import labor. Mr. Tang Kapil. Thank you, President. When we discussed the issue of statutory minimum wage, the business sector said that we should not interfere with the market. Wages is a matter of supply and demand. It should be left to the market. And now, when workers are finally able to uh, get a uh, better time when their wages have gone up somewhat. Now they are trying to import labor. We should have allowed the market to determine what wages uh, would be appropriate. So the employers and the workers will be able to sort out between themselves as to the appropriate reward or wages. And then we will look at uh, the supply and demand. And then the employers just said that no. That's not necessary because a supply can be met by importing workers, and that would also undermine the local labor market. Actually, some of the figures are really lamentable. I'm just continuing what uh, Ms. Chen has been saying just now. All right, if you look at the R&B department, the rating and valuation department, 1997, October, that's uh, the peak of the property market. That's at the height of the property market. All right, at the index is 100 for the property prices. Now, 2013, August, if you look at the property prices index, is 142, a rise by 42%. Just now, Ms. Chen also said that uh, in 10 years' time, there has been no increase whatsoever in wages. All right, uh, in moving the amendment, Mr. Frankie Yick, representing his particular constituency, all right, uh, in the transport sector, well, um, in June 2003, if you look at uh, the trade index, the real wages were 118.5, and then 2013 June, 105.1, so a reduction by 13.4. So in simple terms, our rentals have gone up very substantially, and yet wages have come down drastically. That's why you are not able to recruit enough workers, because uh, it's actually against inflation. All right, economy has been going up, and yet wages have come down. So what we are frustrated, we are, what we find to be most frustrating is not that, uh, well, for rentals, the administration cannot do anything about it, but then for wages, there is room for upward adjustment, and yet the administration is helping the business sector to suppress it. That's why we are frustrated. And that's why through the population policy on the, on, with the packaging like that, uh, the administration is paving the way for importing workers. All right, there are three stages because you're talking about releasing the workforce. And number two, you're talking about importation of labor. And then in the third stage, I've actually forgotten everything about it. Well, under the population policy, we should be talking about the quality of our human resources and also with an, with an aging population. We might have, we might have to look at the policy of caring for the elders. Uh, but then, apparently, the administration is only focusing on this. If we do not have enough workforce, then we will have to import workers. But then, what's most important is the administration has deliberately distorted the picture. They are misleading people to think that we have already got an existing system to import workers. The um, LAB is adopting a cautious attitude uh, in importing workers. It has been prudent and uh, reasonable. And then if we are not able to identify the skilled workers in the local market, then the LAB would agree that for a particular project, for some of the um, important infrastructure project, in order to ensure that it will be able to complete on schedule, then workers will have to be imported. But then at the same time, we have to train up local workers. One of the obvious examples is the uh, Hong kong macau Jiu High Bridge. We have to build the artificial island. That's why we have to carry out reclamation and we have to hire extra hands. But then if it's about uh, building work 
uh, building buildings, and it was just uh, um, putting together a building. And if we still have to hire uh, foreign workers, then we are really not doing justice to local workers because in the past there was no protection whatsoever, uh, and uh, and now their conditions of service have improved somewhat. And now you're trying to suppress them. Yes, you may not be. Uh, crashing their rice bowls uh, right away, but then that would help suppress their wages because if um, well, if there are workers coming into Hong Kong, then naturally wages uh, would remain stagnant if they do not come down. All right, Secretary for Labor and Welfare, you're not just uh, the Secretary for Worker, you're also responsible for welfare. As you can see, the workers are not able to share the success of our economy. In 2011, on, from, starting from the 1st of May, all right, for the three categories of uh, CSSA, singleton, uh, fa singleton families, and also low unemployed, and also low income. All right, uh, there was a reduction by some 25 percent. So behind this, it shows that for the three categories, single parent families, unemployment, and low uh, and low wages, and so on. All right, uh, the FTU said that uh, we will have to introduce statutory minimum wage so that there would be a floor uh, income so that more people can be attracted uh, to rejoin the labor market. We have been successful. That has vindicated uh, what we have said. But then still, it's too low. All right, uh, for those on CSSA, it's only 25 is 25 percent. But then according to the administration, if you look at the poverty line, has, has that come, come down by 25 percent or 15 percent or even 5 percent, well, for those who have been lifted out of CSSA, are they poor? Still, they are very poor because their wages are low. Once again, I'd like to cite this. All right, some from the catering sector said that in the catering sector, they have difficulty recruiting people over $10,000 uh, for uh, bowl cleaning or, or, or for dishwashing. But then in 2003, June, for catering and residential care homes, the uh, wage indicate the wage index one one seven point one, and then uh, in twenty thirteen June one zero three point seven, so a reduction by thirteen point four percent. Unless your figures are flawed, what does this represent? So we find it mind boggling. You have difficulty recruiting people. I think it's as simple as that. Uh, it's just because of the low wages and also the working hours are too long. I am really sympathetic with the. Um, uh, uh, elderly care uh, profession. I think we should look at it as um, um, a welfare policy because if you import workers, if you want them to work for 12 hours, will they be treating the elders kindly? Well, for the long working hours, it's, go it's not going to work. Thank you. Mr. Michael Tin. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to thank Mr. Kwok Wai Kang for moving this motion on labor importation. Labor importation. There are always two sides of the argument. And the argument just goes on, be it the advanced economies in the Western countries or emerging economies. Every time these two words are mentioned, the labor sector will feel unease. I understand that they're concerned that the imported labor will compete with local workers for jobs. When the Labour Party uh, was the ruling party in UK, there was uh, massive labor importation. Economy improved, and yet when there was surplus in manpower, when economy has improved, Jobs for local workers reduced. As em as an employer, I don't agree to um, opening up the uh, labor import the market um, to labor importation uh, in all sectors. Employers should put the local workers first. When my father was uh, in the industrial sector, he uh, ran a um, factory making jeans. And every time when the factory expanded, he told others that he employed more people from 500 to 1,000. And that was what made him proud. What he felt proud was how many workers he was able to hire and how many jobs he could provide instead of how much money he was making. Um, the economy continues to improve. 
and we are almost at full employment. It seems to be a good time for us. But in certain sectors like construction industry and elderly care sector, um, they have uh, reached the um, the uh, trough because it's the worst time for them as uh, they have a severe labor shortage. According to uh, the Labor Department's information, there are currently 78,000 um, jobs. And because of lowering birth rate and uh, aging population, uh, there will be um, more difficulty in hiring workers. For example, in the elderly care sector, 80% of those residing in the residential care homes are CSSA recipients. It's difficult to transfer the costs onto elderly residents, and it is therefore difficult to offer higher wages to attract fresh blood. And because of statutory minimum wage and uh, soaring rentals, it's getting more and more difficult for RCG to survive. And there is also the knock-on effect. Um, if um, the uh, dishwasher gets uh, ten thousand, then for uh, waiters, they would um, he must get the uh, twenty thousand, and for manager thirty thousand, and so on. So, please. Uh, members from the labor sector, tell us how to do business. You can put the blame on high rentals, but this is not the only f um, factor. I can challenge the l labor unions. Try um, do business and uh, try uh, being a poor employer and see how you can run a business. If you can successfully run an elderly home with uh, sufficient manpower, then I will uh, not um, propose the expansion of the SLS supplementary labor scheme. The quality of um, helpers in elderly homes uh, are uh, is deteriorating. Now, every four hours, the workers have to help um, the elderly uh, with mobility issues to change their diapers, but because of manpower shortage, they now can can only do it uh, once every eight hours. And uh, the same happens to meals. And uh, some in a, in an elderly home, uh, there was a caretaker who was uh, seventy three years old, and uh, she was asked to stay because they couldn't find any other helpers. And uh, for elderly people, they take they are taking care of um, or for old workers, they are taking care of the elderly people uh, like themselves. So. If lab there is no labor importation, then um, those affected will not only be employers but the elderly people. The suggestion that by increasing wages you can solve the problem and attract uh, fresh blood, this is uh, um, a generalization. This is uh, ignoring the real issue for wages. Which are much lower. They prefer some people prefer to be security guards, and unless the economy takes a rapid downturn, the labor uh, workforce in in Hong Kong um, may not change its mind to uh, work as low skilled workers. This is uh, the in the, the fact today. The labor sector should not turn a blind eye and shut their ears and just say no to labor importation. I agree that uh, jobs will, t will be taken away from local workers if uh, we blindly import labor, and that is why we need an effective mechanism in vetting uh, labor importation applications. Now the LAB um, is uh, represented. Is, um, the la LAB comprises uh, representatives from the labor sector, and uh, there is a severe shortage of um, imported labor. Just 2,415. I think the uh, LAB's composition should be changed, uh, and we should invite members um, who are professionals or experts who uh, have credibility, who can provide um, fair and impartial. Uh, advice as a third party to the labor advisory board. So that we can strike a balance. 
the new people's party thinks that we should not、um, just say no to labor importation. We think for certain sectors, labor importation should be allowed. When there is sufficient power in the future, we will be the first one to come out to reduce the imported labor. Mr. Liang Yuzhong, Mr. President, just now, Mr. Michael Tian challenged the labor sector. He asked us whether, under this environment, we can do business and see who would win. I can foresee that definitely,、uh, Mr. Michael Tian, you will win because, in present circumstances, as you said,、uh, you have all the winning factors. For example, in residential care homes for the elderly, you explained the situation very clearly. Nowadays, most elderly residents pay the uh,、um, accommodation fee.、Um, Which is packed to the CSSA rate, and、uh, that is why, with little revenue and with high rental and、uh, huge expenses, what is the solution? The solution is to hire workers at low wages. So, who will be willing to take up this low-paid job? Apart from low wages. Working hours are long, and also the job nature is obnoxious. So, combining all these factors, it's not possible to hire workers. That's the reality. So the solution is not labor importation. On the contrary, as I repeatedly told the secretary, should the shouldn't the subsidy Um, or allowance be raised instead of、um, paying at the CSSA rate, so that with more income, the homes will be able to cope with、uh, other expenditure, including wages and rental. But unfortunately, secretary is unwilling to、um, do it. So you're unable to、uh, do magic. So, with、um, little benefit and uh, meager uh, wages and long working hours, and、uh, the result is that、uh, you have labor shortage. But then, is it fair to say that、uh, you need to import labor to resolve this problem? That that's not confined to this sector. That's that happens in other sectors in, as well. For example, for sh small shops or restaurants, sometimes that、uh, they would post a bill saying that they like to hire a clean、um, a dishwasher or odd job worker, and、uh, some will also say that the wages are now so high they can't even recruit、uh, dishwashers. But I like to say that、uh, dishwashing is、uh, extremely obnoxious. It's extremely hard, and、uh, the working environment is、uh, very very bad. And in the past. Because we didn't have statutory minimum wage,、um, aged women who were unable to find other jobs had to had no alternative but to take up this obnoxious、uh, job, and they were oppressed. They were paid excessively low wages, but now with minimum wage, they have more options. So now you're complaining that you can't hire anyone to wash dishes. Now, when we talk about care homes, it's about low wages. When we talk about dishwashing, however, it's because the work environment is very poor. Working hours are very long, and nobody prefer、uh, to prefers to、uh, take this job. They prefer other jobs. Mr. President, I don't know whether you、um, noticed that、uh, recently we have uh, some emerging, a、uh, uh, new emerging、uh, sector. That's、uh, dishwashing companies. That is, they use machines as well as、uh, laborer to wash dishes. And the work environment actually improved. It's air conditioned. It is it's more spacious, and that、uh, you don't need to work on slippery floor. So. More people are willing to work in these companies as a result. So we should not make an arbitrary conclusion by saying that we should import labor. We should instead look into why labor shortage appears、um, in certain sectors. 
That's because of poor working environment. For smaller restaurants, um, the workers wash dishes at the back alley. Sometimes it's fortunate if workers could sit on a stool, but sometimes they just need to bend down to wash dishes. So just try it. I had this experience. My back sold. And how many hours do these workers uh, work? They need to work uh, from eight to, to even uh, twelve hours. And sometimes they need to work um, um, in the middle of the night. So with such a um, hard uh, working environment, who would want to do it? Apart from dishwashers, the same also happens in construction industry and bar vendors. And um, the sector says it's difficult to attract um, young people to join the industry. But uh, secretary, now more uh, we see more uh, younger uh, bar vendors. Why? Because uh, wages have gone up. The job um, might be a. Uh, uh, Difficult or tough, but um, with high wages, there are people who are willing to do it. Some well, uh, recently um, we see. I see this media report. A young person graduated from university, gave up the office job, and uh, took up the job as a barbender. And the wages gone up had gone up uh, from ten thousand to sixty thousand. With a high starting point, you could attract people to join. The industry, so we should not give an arbitrary conclusion that we should import labor. We should find out why we have labor shortage. In fact, it's due to a number of factors: wages, work environment, and uh, thirdly, working hours, and uh, fourthly, safety. These are factors of why, for certain occupations, they are unable to. Hire workers. We should. You should not take the easy way out, and suggest labor importation. Just now, a number of members already repeated this point. There are potential of our population uh, yet to be unleashed. Uh, so submit. Mr. Yu Siwing, an employment rate in Hong Kong has been maintained at about three percent for a long time. It's almost full employment. We have an aging population. There's a low fertility rate. Is the fact that we're going to face shortage of labor. Now, in the construction sector, catering sector, elderly home sector, transportation sector, and other sector where the working conditions are relatively poor, people are having difficulties hiring workers. So we do not make any improvement. It may affect the development of some trades or even the economy of Hong Kong as a whole. Last month, the government published the population policy consultation document. There's a proposal to expand the importation of labor because uh, the government would like to listen to different views so that we could come to a rational solution to the problem. But then some labor unions wouldn't even consider it. They say that it will undermine the bargaining power of local workers. So they are against any expansion of labor importation. If we just increase wages and we do not get to the root cause of um, imbalance in the labor market, it won't help address the shortage of labor. Uh, rather, it would just have hurt our competitiveness in the region. Hong Kong started as a small fishing village. Now is an international metropolis. It's a place where there are plenty of business opportunities. The key factor is um, human is, is human capital. Uh, we have um, people who start from uh, um, scratch. We have um, immigrants. We have businessmen. At um, different times, they have contributed to our economy. There is mobility of the population. And then there are, and there's an uh, um, inflow of uh, people, and that creates more business opportunities. And with more business more business opportunities, more people will be attracted to Hong Kong. So that's a a good cycle. If we indiscriminately restrict um, the number of uh, new arrivals and expansion of labor importation, it will only hurt the long term development of our economy. Now, if it's uh, it's difficult to hire people, it's a good thing. That means the market is vibrant and there are demands. But if we cannot hire people, then um, it, the the industries may dwindle. I think many employers 
uh, understand that. That's why more and more employers pay more attention to the wages, the um, staff benefits and promotions prospects, as well as the working condition, uh, because they want uh, staff to have a sense of belonging. And they could. Uh, they also want to attract people to work for them. As employees, they must also understand the difficulties faced by employers, so they could help businesses to stay vibrant. Now, only if the businesses are stable that uh, jobs are protected, and only then would there be prospects for um, the jobs. So this um, 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 chicken and egg issue, but we, we, we need both. Now, where there is um, a shortage of labor in certain sectors, we should improve, import labor because that will address the real issue. And um, it could also relieve the stress on um, manpower. We could also release the potential for others where people will have more opportunities to become involved in uh, high-level decision-making work. And then uh, that we could uh, together enhance the competitiveness of Hong Kong. At the end, we'll be able to create more jobs. So if there is some um, uh, appropriate importation of labor, it won't uh, hurt uh, local people. Rather, it's, uh, uh, it's would benefit them. Take uh, elderly homes. The work is tough and income is low. Um, so young people are not keen to join the trade. It is, and then it's not realistic to substantially increase wages to uh, bring young people into the trade because the elderly and the families could not afford uh, much higher fees. And the operators cannot run the business at a loss. So they have no choice. Sometimes they may just have to relocate their business the, across the boundary. If we don't improve the situation, it will not bode well for the development of the um, um, elderly care services in Hong Kong. Now, in the elderly care services, there is a shortage of 5,000 workers. We have a rapidly aging population. In 2009, uh, by 2029, there will be 5 million people aged 65 or above, and there will be an increasing demand for elderly care services. So there is still a lot of room for development for the elderly care services, but we need to import uh, labor to take up um, the uh, the basic, the elementary work, and then as long as Hong Kong people are willing to learn, they will, there will be upward mobility, and then pe more people will be attracted to the trade. Now, labor unions should cast aside their uh, prejudice. They sh should uh, uh, it shouldn't be a taboo to talk about importing labor for the elderly care services. Now, in light of the uh, car special characteristics of our market, I support um, N. Chen's, uh, Madam N. Chen's uh, amendment. That is, uh, with the consensus of Labor Advisory Board, we should uh, promote arrangement to import our labor. Now, we want uh, to make sure that the arrangement for importing labor is uh, objective and balanced. We should uh, first start with uh, industry with a serious shortage of workers, and then um, in the LAB, we could uh, bring in a few more scholars or people uh, who command authority. And then together, we could consider the issue of labor importation. In some industry, there is a shortage of labor. It's only the start of the problem. It's expected that um, the problem will become worse in future. So we hope both employers and employees will work together to come to a solution. There must be mutual understanding before we could address the, uh, resolve the labor shortage problem. Thank you. Dr. Kenneth Chen. Thank you, President. Tonight we're here to debate the question of importing labor. I was an important labor myself. In 1990, from 1992 to 1995, I was uh, imported to po Poland to teach. I fully appreciate the um, intention of the policy. That's to help um, higher institutions in Poland, Poland through their transition after the um, Communist Party um, stepped down. So it's to um, start new programs and to start new research projects and also uh, to train a new generation of um, scholars in international politics. Now, in Pol Poland, uh, it's just a matter of convenience that uh, they imported uh, people like us because uh, we are trained, so they just brought, bring us there. 
and they asked us to do, to take up work uh, uh, that would have otherwise uh, take a long to otherwise take a long time to do it. Now, for imported labor like myself, I do uh, demand a lot. There's n there are not much benefits to speak of. I think the government has to explain to the labor sector why there is a special need for people like us, like me, uh, to go all the way to Poland to help the uh, development of new academic fields. Because at the same time, in Poland, they have to make a proper preparation for their own labor force. So the people can see that even if there's a short-term importation of labor, it's short-term. In the long run, it's about improving the working condition in Poland and training a new generation of scholars to do the research they need to do and to do the teaching work. Three years later, I saw that uh, students I taught uh, could take over from me. And they were able to run the programs properly. They were able to do the research properly. So I have a, my mission was accomplished, and I could leave happily. Now, I'm not trying to say that um, with my experience, when we discuss um, population policy, we must accept um, importation of labor. What I want to say is the latter part of my story. That is, if the government doesn't have the vision to look ahead, to think things through properly, Instead, the government just talks about labor importation, but it has no regard to the needs, rights, and support um, measures for local workers. Then they remain short-sighted. They just need people to work for a few years or a few months, and then that um, um, keeps going on. And what's supposed to be short-term, timely measures become long-term arrangement. And for local workers, they will feel that the government has never heard their views, has never taken, uh, cared about their development, there's no job training, there are no support policies to release potential in the workforce or in the population. Now, population policy could be very interesting, but unfortunately the government has led us to just a single issue of whether we should import labor or not. In Hong Kong, we have an immense wealth gap. You might say that the overall unemployment rate is not high. But uh, from May to July, from the Census and Statistics Department's uh, figure, the unemployment rate 17.2% for the age group 15 to 19. From 20 to 29, last quarter was 5.3%. It's gone up to 6.1%. It shows that... Uh, for young people, the unemployment um, problem has not been improved. But then population policy makes importation labor one of its uh, major policy initiatives. So on, uh, would it um, actually spark further resentment to uh, labor importation? Would it uh, cause more rift in society? Well, you shouldn't just mention uh, labor importation. Yes, I know sometimes there's a uh, short term need to import labor, but do you have measures to show Hong Kong people, uh, local workers, and young people that uh, uh, you just resort to short term measures all the time and you don't look after us? And then the statistics also shows that there is a group of about 30 to 40,000 young people. The NEETS, the NETS not in employment and education and training. In other words, those who are not in the job market, those who are not receiving training or education. We're talking about these groups of uh, people. But two-thirds of them, they have high education qualifications. So how do we respond to their situation? Now, the labor participation rate 58% in 2012, by 2041, dropped to 49.5%. That's what the do consultation documents said. That's why uh, the policy objective is to attract more people to the labor market. Now, there are retirees. Many actually uh, are made to retire. So how do we bring them back into the labor market? That's important. Many elderly people, they don't look old at all. 
they're still energetic, um, happy and vibrant. They could help uh, the, the labor market. They could share th their experience. And uh, before me, many members spoke about women. If we improve child care services, if there's 15-year free education, full whole day kindergarten education, if, we, if the government doesn't have any support measures in these areas, if the government doesn't make any decisive decisions on such matters, well, then I'm worried. When C.Y. Leung criticized um, Henry Leung Chang during the election because Henry Tang led a population study, he uh, criticized his population policy was being um, unclear and 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 if if the government doesn't address the issues I mentioned, his the pol population policy of Siwan would be exactly the same. Uh, for our young people, our workers, our women, you know, the government's not doing anything to help their job prospects. In that case, how can you expect us to support importation of labor? Thank you. you take Ms. Abel Ho, according to latest statistics, unemployment rate in Hong Kong is only 3.3 percent. Underemployment rate is only 1.5 percent. The government emphasizes that Hong Kong enjoys full employment. Um, the catering industry, construction industry, care for the elderly. Um, um, such industries have difficulties in recruitment. We don't argue for that for the catering industry. As for the catering industry, for those who wash dishes, the monthly uh, wage is $16,000, but there are difficulties in recruiting enough bodies to do uh, washing of dishes. But should we therefore expand the current importation labor scheme? We have a uh, scheme to import foreign labor at present, though limited. The Democratic Party is a view that priority should be given to enhancing current labor policy, promote employment within the district, and encourage women to work and uh, enable elderly, the disabled, and ethnic minorities uh, to work by providing them with more job opportunities. This is better than expanding the labor importation scheme. This is more in line with public interest. With regard to the original motion, Mr. Poon's amendment, Ms. Lee Chuck Yen's amendment, that the Democratic Party support all, supports all of them. As for uh, Yik Chi Ming, uh, Frankie Yik, and Chiang Lai Wan's amendments, we cannot support them. With the introduction of century minimum wage, there has been significant increase, improvement in wages and working conditions. Uh, there is a need uh, to further improve working conditions, in particular in respect of long working hours. Uh, the retail, security, catering, uh, care, uh, caring um, business, um, working hours per week is nearly 60 hours. Although m more pay will be given to those who work harder, but it will be not very attractive to get new entrants. We urge the administration to observe standard working hours of 44 hours per week, and there should also be uh, um, legislation for paternity leave, and there should be more family-friendly measures to improve the um, working conditions of workers. This will be a very um, will be a very uh, strong incentive for those who are not yet uh, in the labor market. They will be attracted back into the labor market as for the uh, current WITS, work incentive um, traffic subsidy, uh, which can encourage people to work across the district. Say, for example, those in Tin Shui Wai uh, uh, can get $600 if they travel to work in another district. But uh, working across the district is um, has to overcome many problems, not only uh, traveling. They have to spend time traveling. They may have to spend three hours per day. And if they work for eight to ten hours per day, then that will be a very long time. 
Therefore, those who live in remote areas have hurdles in respect of joining the labor market. In order to avoid mismatching, the Democratic Party is viewed it more um, job opportunities within the same districts should be provided. The administration is, consider, is considering how to uh, build more homes for the elderly, but I hope the administration can have better planning. In the future, in public housing estates, um, through planning, more units can be provided for homes for the elderly. The future carers can therefore come from the neighboring housing estates that will um, avoid uh, the uh, time and cost for working across districts. Uh, in fact, these are costs in total, and the administration has to uh, consider that. As for women, uh, working women, uh, Ms. Helena Wong, in fact, uh, has asked for more childcare service so as to enable women to go back to work again if they um, are willing to do so. You can see that uh, for those 25 to 29 labor participation rate among women is 83.9%, but for the age group 30 to 39, only about 60%. Um, that's the uh, problem of age, discrimination. The majority of the women, having got married, having raised a family, uh, have to uh, care for their children, and therefore they cannot go back to work. They are forced to give up the jobs they like and the jobs which uh, they have been working for a long time. We therefore hope that the administration will provide more child care service throughout the 18 districts of Hong Kong. This is absolutely necessary and is helpful in encouraging women to join the labor market. As said by other members, we should assist retired elderly people who can still work and also the um, ethnic minorities and young people um, to work. Uh, and also the disabled, they should be assisted to get jobs. Uh, the administration and the NGOs should set up targets for employing disabled uh, people. And then after all this is done, then the administration can then consider uh, its uh, labor importation policy to see if uh, it uh, can be expanded. Your time is up. Mr. Gary Fan. Now, uh, Mr. President, uh, the New Democrats insist on the policy of giving priority to Hong Kong people with regard to importation of labor. Uh, the administration should protect the interests of local workers. We oppose expansion of importation of workers. The, those who represent the business sector say that blindly opposing importation of labor will undermine Hong Kong's economic development. But blindly, on the contrary, blindly importing uh, labor will only undermine uh, the, uh, Hong Kong's economy. Um, there are 78,000 vacancies in September and 130,000 people unemployed, 57,000 people underemployed. Um, that is ample labor supply in Hong Kong. Uh, considering uh, relaxing uh, importation labor, um, as people ask the administration to consider importing waiter, waitresses, and uh, salespersons in the retail sector. But in fact, there are more than 10,000 vacancies in these sectors. The vacancies increased by 7% on a quarterly basis, uh, but declined by 3.6% on a yearly, a year to year basis. It shows that the employment situation is changing. Since there are more than 130,000 people unemployed, these um, labor for the, these numbers can be tapped uh, to fill the um, low skill jobs. In fact, um, the difficulty in 
recruitment um, arise from the following factors. Now, uh, the uh, number of um, workers increased by 70 percent, but they say there, is, there aren't enough manpower. This is not the reason for importation. Eco economic growth in the past eight years is about 40 percent. Uh, retail employers, uh, employers in the retail industry has not, um, profit of the retail industry has not been reflected in increase in wages. In fact, they are part, um, they are contributors to on the job poverty, on working poverty. They don't raise uh, salaries, they don't improve working conditions, they want to expand the importation of labor to undermine the livelihood of local workers. This will only um, heighten the, uh, this will only antagonize the workers. As for the catering industry, uh, they have long working hours, their wages are just um, remain the same, some even declined, uh, therefore several to attract new entrants. As for the construction industry, over the past decade or so, wages are maintained at a very low level. It's only in the past two to three years uh, there has been an increase. Just because of um, the um, infrastructure projects and um, importation of labor is expanded, that will uh, deal a blow to the construction workers and it's unfair to them. Uh, among the uh, construction workers, there are four types of jobs, bar bending, concrete work, um, scaffolding and molding. They are all high risk and they uh, are very demanding and therefore few want to uh, join these uh, trades and therefore wages have increased. If the administration provides more training to attract new entrants, Instead of importing labor, um, that is the right approach. Mr. President, in 2012, according to the CNS Department's uh, median wage survey for non-skilled workers, um, 8,600 per month. As for service um, and also retail, uh, it's just $10,000. They have long working hours, a few leave days. Um, Therefore, these jobs are not attractive. Even if uh, you join the trade, you are still a working poor. Um, importation of worker is just a short-sighted measure and will undermine local workers' interests. The administration is to deal with um, problems in the labor market. The administration is to provide training. Say, for example, in the construction industry, where there is a shortage of manpower, the administration will take the lead to work with the tertiary education institutions to provide training courses to train up uh, people with skills. The administration has to provide professional training, forecast the demand for different posts and jobs. Uh, um, as for the construction industry, catering industry, uh, as for the catering industry, retail industry, and uh, caring industry, the administration has to make sure that if there is any decline in these industries, there will not be increase in unemployment, and there should be adequate uh, manpower to fill the vacancies. As for expansion of importation of labor, um, the employers and employees have a big difference. Importation of labor can become an other severe conflict, another time bomb when Hong Kong is already full of conflicts. Uh, when the administration has such a low credibility, I don't believe the administration can defuse such a bomb. The administration's priority is to uh, do job matching for the unemployed and provide training to them and uh, to improve the quality of living of local workers instead of making use of short-term measures to expand the importation of worker, thereby creating more and more working poor people. Thank you. Ms. Lam Tai Fai. Thank you, President. Earlier, the administration announced the consultation paper on population policy. It mentioned manpower shortage in certain industries and they say that uh, we need to explore whether there is a need for importation of labor. 
Mr. Kowaika moved a motion about importation of labor. He said very clearly that he opposes to the expansion of importation of labor. I asked Mr. Kwok, what is the scope of your motion? Does it only cover blue-collar workers? He said no. Blue or white collar, professionals, skilled workers, designers, anyone who come to Hong Kong to work is under the scope. Well, I've got that clear. Now I can make a judgment. I think Mr. Kwok's motion is across the board, is pessimistic and a little bit radical. He has ignored the development prospect and the macroeconomic situation of certain industries. When it comes to labor importation, we have to have a rational discussion. We need to be inclusive and calm when analyzing the situation. We have to take the middle ground without being radical. We should not jump to conclusions and say that there should not be an expansion of labor importation in any industry. This is across the board. The different industries are diversifying, upgrading and restructuring. Every industry needs different types of labor. There are a lot of emerging industries which need different types of manpower. Very often these emerging industries can't recruit. The administration cannot provide effective training courses. As a result, there is manpower shortage. And because of the restructuring of industries, The industry itself cannot ex develop, so there is surplus manpower, and they have to change their jobs, and they cannot apply what they've learned at school to what they do. For some industries, there is an aging population, and there is a succession problem. Manpower, the labor market is a very complicated market because different industries require different types of manpower and a different amount. In the end, it's affected by the economic development. An industry developing well will require more manpower. Otherwise, there will be surplus manpower. If we have to all our industries flourishing, then we need a suitable level of manpower. It's regrettable that an industry dwindles simply because of shortage of manpower, because this will drive up unemployment. And all industries are interlinked. The success of one industry drives the success of another, and vice versa. Say, for example, construction industry. If it dwindles, renovation will fall too. And when industries bloom, uh, catering will bloom too. Everything is at play. We can't say that uh, when there is manpower shortage in one industry, it won't affect another industry. Of course, in labor importation touches on the nerve of uh, the labor in sector. And very often there are disputes, uh, say um, paternal leave and uh, the minimum wage. The administration has to deal with it very carefully. Labor importation is not a monster. Members have spoken. Foreign domestic worker release housemakers and, uh, and allow them to get back into the uh, labor market. Otherwise, they have to, without uh, foreign domestic workers, they will have to stay at home. Martin Liu is a director of the jockey club. If there is no foreign jockeys, jockeys of international standard, of course we have uh, high quality jockeys in Hong Kong. Some even won international 
trophies for me, but without overseas jockeys,、uh, our racing industry will not be as successful. Deng Xiaoping used、um, horse races when he referred to fifty years of no change, and we see that there is indeed a need to take care of certain industries first. The administration should listen to views from different <coughs> groups, explore all the issues. And take into account the actual needs of individual trades and industries. Well, some say that importation of labor is to reduce costs, but that is not the purpose. The purpose of importation of labor is to increase manpower. Well, when there is sufficient manpower trained locally, then labor importation of that industry can be stopped. It's not the case that once the door is open, it cannot be closed. There can be、um, review from time to time. In this way, you can help local、uh, workers. And in, in, we need an extensive public consultation so that people will get a better understanding of it, and the all and needs of different industries can be met. Mr. Martin Liao, in relation to the population policy consultation paper,、uh, our population will start to drop from 2018, and it will fall from 58.8 percent in 2012 to、um, 49.5 in 2041. So we will、uh, population bonus、uh, will be replaced with population deficit. One of the measures to address the problem is labor importation. This is to meet challenges、uh, resulting from population、um, with a dwindling population. The labor sector immediately opposed to it because they said that labor importation may affect job opportunities of local workers and suppress their wages. I fully understand the concern of the labor sector, but there is no need. To see labor importation as a monster to be feared, if it is properly dealt with, and this will properly enhance our、um, productivity, to bring further、um, economic development in our neighbor neighbor areas. Say, for example, Singapore, there is labor importation, and it greatly benefited their economy. In 2012, Macau and Singapore imported. Eighty thousand, eighty-seven thousand workers and eight hundred and eighty workers in Hong Kong. We've only imported two thousand four hundred and fifteen、um, foreign workers, which is about one percent of our labor force. This excludes foreign domestic worker. We don't have to catch up with other places. We need to look at whether there is a genuine need. For labor importation, importation of elementary labor is in need. We have over three hundred and ten thousand foreign domestic workers in Hong Kong. No one can deny the contributions they've made. They have alleviated burden on Hong Kong families, and they allow homemakers to join the labor market again. And this is a prime example that cannot. Be denied, and we should not be prejudiced against this measure and simply refuse to discuss it. Indeed, for certain industries,、uh, there is uh, recruitment uh, difficulties. They are、um, residential uh, home care, uh, care home for the elderly, catering industry, and construction industry. Very often, we find vacancies. In Tongchong,、uh, there is a dishwasher.、Uh, there is、um, a dishwasher's vacancy,、um, paying twenty thousand dollars a month, and still no one answer the、uh, advertisement. At the beginning, 
according to a survey done by uh, Elderly Service Association, the average age of healthcare workers in Hong Kong is 52. They they still need an additional 5,000 workers. When we have the 10 major infrastructure, we need a large amount of construction worker. According to a survey done in April this year by the uh, Construction Industry um, Association, they are still need, in need of 10,000 workers. With manpower shortage, works will be delayed, project costs increased, and the housing project of Hong Kong will be delayed. In the end, Hong Kong's competitiveness will be undermined. With the chain reaction, other industries will suffer too. In order to address the problem of manpower shortage, the quickest way is to import labor. Of course, we have to protect the rights of local workers. We need to think about a safety net. Labor importation is only a short-term solution. In the long run, the administration will have to enhance uh, vocational training, put in place policies including a career path to release potential labor without affecting the job opportunities of local labor and uh, without suppressing local wages. We need to consider labor, labor importation with conditions first. Labor importation can only apply to certain industries that is needed for economic development and there is a genuine need and then there is a genuine manpower shortage. There should be a quota quota and a time limit. And there should also be a ratio of uh, imported labor and uh, local labor. And imported uh, the, the wage of imported labor will not be more than um, the median wage. When there is a downturn of Hong Kong's economy and when there is an increase of manpower locally, then the uh, importation should be put on hold. Put on hold. If we can put our differences down to engage in a rational discussion, I believe that uh, there will be a win-win situation. I across, I oppose uh, to the across-the-board opposition to the expansion of labor importation. Mr. Alan Leung. Mr. President, in recent times, we have over 10,000 people taking to the streets. It's because foreign invested casinos would like to import labor. As a result, jobs that were originally filled by locals would be replaced by imported labor. Just recently, the government published the consultation document on population policy, which is actually lopsided in its recommendations because it points out that in certain industries, in the construction industry, retail industry, catering business and healthcare profession, there's a labor shortage problem. We already have a labor importation scheme to import skilled workers and semi-skilled workers. And a four-week recruitment exercise will have to be conducted by the employers concerned first. The Labor Department will also conduct a placement exercise. And the wages offered must not be lower than the median wage offered to local workers for the same job type. If no employees could be recruited, then the employer can apply for importing labor. This is precisely to protect the interest of local workers, to prevent employers from importing cheap labor. Mr. President, before we decide whether or not to, to expand labor importation, we have to consider two aspects. First of all, is it really true that we have a serious shortage of low-skilled workers, thus leading to a collapse of our economy? Secondly, is there no alternative to complement our labor shortage? On the 9th of January this year, when Mr. Paul Chan answered a question of this council, he pointed out that 
the unemployment rate was 4.4% and the underemployment rate was 7%. There are jobs not filled, thus leading to a slippage of infrastructure projects. Now, such a suggestion is not being substantiated by figures. From the Census and Statistics Department, in the third quarter of 2012, there's only a 1% vacancy rate on our work sites. So, vacancy is not filled, it's not really serious. And then the unemployment rate is 4% for primary graduates and 4.5% for secondary graduates. For young persons, the unemployment rate is rising. Therefore, young people and those with low educational qualifications will be the first to be sacrificed under the importation scheme. So unless we cannot pluck this loophole, we shouldn't be importing labor. And there must be sufficient support for our families to unleash the labor force of a lot of our women. At the moment, uh, there are nursery services uh, for working parents. Uh, for those under six years old, there's this neighborhood scheme. And then for those below 12, uh, there are nursery services uh, after school. However, both services are seriously inadequate. Altogether in Hong Kong, we have 720 quotas, but uh, we have 30,000 poor families with young children. Take an average of one child per family, only 2% of the children population gets served. The construction industry has not been able to attract young people to join. Some newspapers point out that some of those born in the 1980s joined the bartending the bar and steel industry, earning $60,000 per month. Well, that may be an individual example, but the business sector has always been grumbling about not being able to recruit workers. But have employers thought of improving conditions of service and working environments so as to attract young people to join them? And then we should have planning for our infrastructure and works projects to prevent workers from lacking jobs at one time. But finding too many jobs at one time. So the Civic Party does not support a casual importation of labor. In principle, will, of course, oppose the expansion of the labor importation scheme unless it's for economic development justifications. But at the moment, we don't see that worry. We're worried that once we expand the labor importation scheme, in future, it may run out of control. Mr. President, we're now talking about public housing production. As a result, we may need to import labor. But we're worried that employers of other industries may like to follow suit. Recently, the retail industry has also claimed that there's a shortage of labor in that industry. So we're worried that cheap labor may be imported, thus leading to the unemployment of local workers. That's not a situation that the Civic Party can accept. So the Civic Party opposes the amendments of Frankie Yeg and Chiang Lai Wan, but would like to support the original motion and the remaining two amendments. Thank you. Dr. Helena Wong. Thank you, Mr. President. Just now, Mr. Albert Ho already said that the Democratic Party object to the further expansion of the labor importation scheme. Throughout the whole world, all responsible governments will give priorities to the employment of local workers. There's no exception. In particular, we have to take care and fully assist those women 
who have got children after marriage, and then they should be able to join the job market again after delivery, so that we can re we can unleash their potentials. Mr. President, we now have confusing and confronting views. On the one hand, in the recent public consultation document on population policy, it said that the administration would like to unleash the potential labor force of women. But then throughout the whole public consultation document, there is a hidden but also manifested message. That is, there is a need to import labor. So are we going to unleash the labor force of women or are we going to import labor? If we import labor, then it will not be genuinely unleashing of the labor force of women. So, Secretary, would you clarify in a moment what you would like to do? Would you like the women to return to the job market? Or are you going to import labor where there's a manpower shortage? So, Secretary, would you please clarify in a moment whether you want to assist women in their employment or you want to import labor? The public consultation document also mentions that in Hong Kong in 2012, there are 1.6 million people between 15 to 64 years old that are not engaged in economic activities. 39.8% of them are taking care of household chores. Well, we believe in the main there are women. In 2010, in 2012, on the average, were 49.6 percent engaged in economic activities. For the males, it's 68.7 percent. So, a discrepancy of 20 percent. Why is it that there's such a huge discrepancy in engagement in economic activities? Now, if we want to increase the working population, the quickest and most direct method is to allow women to join the job market again so that they can unleash their working potentials. And then if there are quality, convenient, quality, and accessible nursery services for parents. Over 70% of the interviewed women said that they would choose to rejoin the job market for full time or part time jobs. Therefore, childcare services are closely, directly related to women employment. There are now 340,000 children below the year of six, but only 29,000 places are subvented, less than 10 percent of the overall number of children. Today, Mr. Matthew Chung, Secretary for Labor and Welfare, in answering my first oral question, said in his reply that there's one government service that's very popular among parents that is subvented full day independent child care centers. Unfortunately, this very popular service in the past few years, in the past three years or even longer, the number of quotas is maintained at 690. Mr. President, today we asked many times why such a popular service has not been adjusted in terms of quotas for so many years. In particular, if you Look more clearly at the figures. Well, I come from Kowloon West. I particularly pay attention to Kowloon West. Kowloon City, Yao Mong, and Sham Shui Po for the three district councils for full days of vented child care centers. Their usage rate is already 100%. That is fully used. So there's no place whatsoever, even for one child. Well, I asked about queuing statistics. But the secretary did not make any disclosure. 
in the whole of Kowloon West, all child care centres are burst to their seams. So how can parents go to work? And they're not just Kowloon West. Central and Western, Southern and Islands, all full. Kwaiting, Chunwan, all full. Tunmun, full. Yunlong, full. All full. Or up to 90-odd percent full. That means the most needed and most popular child care services are inadequate. Secretary, if you want to unleash the labor force of women, you should be determined in increasing the number of quotas for full-time child care services. Otherwise, releasing the labor force of women is just empty talk. Well, in your answers, you said that, oh, these centers are full, they can go elsewhere. But, Mr. President, please take note of one phenomenon. The other services include temporary care for the children only, not full day care. So how can parents go to work? Should they go to work every now and then only? So before you resolve the employment problem of women, you cannot solve this labor importation issue. And you must do something about child care as well. Mr. Ho, thank you, President. Um, advocating the importation of labor is another policy that will create more poverty because uh, the unemployment rate amongst the working poor is not low. Just now, some members have already said that uh, for the youth unemployment rate is already quite high. So when we try to pick a few sectors and say that uh, they have difficulty recruiting workers and then immediately we have to import workers, all right, uh, some statistics uh, or, or some phenomena will emerge. That is, uh, the um, hiring conditions uh, would be lowered. Yes, uh, the median income might not have been lowered, but then uh, there might be overtime work that would be unpaid and also some of the um, harsh terms uh, of service might also have to be accepted. All right, for the imported workers, they have some difficulties. Number one, they have difficulty adapting to local to the local environment, and they might also not be proficient in the local language. So even if you are able to say that uh, their wages are not low at all, but then in terms of the um, in terms of the um, their, lab uh, their their labor contribution, they might have to do a lot more than their local counterparts. So if the conditions of service worsen, then local workers will no longer be competitive unless they are also prepared to accept such conditions of service. So after the importation of workers, you would then be dragging everything down so that the conditions of service will be worsened for everyone. And then some local workers will then be forced to be on the dole because uh, if the wages are kept low, then they would not be able to sustain the entire family. They would not be able to have um, uh, work family balance. And uh, you're actually forcing people to be on the dole. And some from the business sector are saying that even if they are willing to pay high wages, they are still not able to find uh, people to fill the vacancies. But then please do not forget about the very poor working environment. Taking dishwashing as an example. Well, this is a profession whereby the workers are often uh, injured because um, there is no way that they can, can carry the uh, very heavy dishes and um, tableware. All right, uh, there is no reasonable compensation mechanism available. All right, so even if you're willing to work very hard after working two or three months, you will sustain injury and then you will no longer be able to work. So that would also result in difficulty in recruiting people. The construction sector is another example. Once you join the profession, well, this working environment has to be very safe or else many parents would be rather reluctant to allow their children to join the trade. And also, very often the subcontractors uh, would default. All right, if you work very hard, and if from time to time um, the subcontractors would not pay you properly, and also very often they will have to uh, work as casual workers, and uh, in in clement weather there will be no work, and then um, on at other times uh, they will have to work overtime, and they might uh, be overworking. 
and uh, they might sustain injuries and also on meal pays and so on. All right, because of these very poor working conditions um, in some specific sectors, they are finding it difficult to recruit workers. Next is about uh, youth unemployment rate. Well, some colleagues like uh, Dr. Kenneth Chen, for those between 15 and 19, the unemployment rate is as high as 17.2%. And uh, we said that there are jobs that are not uh, taken up. In fact, the business sector should go to the secondary schools to talk to the schools and then to explain to them the different job um, opportunities available. Because uh, for individual teachers and social workers, well, they may not have access to these trades. They may not be able to inform the students that uh, these are the possibilities available to you. Well, in some sectors, indeed, uh, there is serious uh, shortage of labor and the wages are handsome, for example, for pilots. Well, this is within Hong Kong waters and also within the Pearl River Delta. In fact, their wages are rather handsome. But then before they can join the trade, they will have to first uh, work on ocean liners. But then after they have gained some experience in, lo in ocean liners, and these jobs are very uh, well sought after. And uh, for such employment information, the business sector must make sure that uh, they are able to go into the schools to provide the information to the students instead of just uh, requiring the teachers and school authorities to do that because they are already rather tied down by their administrative work. And of course, uh, we must also um, talk about uh, the apprenticeship system. All right, uh, we have given the students some false hope by introducing the sub degree programs, but then we have not worked hard enough to promote this amongst the secondary school leavers. They can also engage in apprentice training so that after secondary schools they can engage in vocational training. And at the, sa at the same time, there is also a chance for them to go into the relevant uh, trade to engage in apprenticeship. All right, if you can engage uh, for one semester in uh, classroom learning and then one semester in practical on the job training, then right after graduation, you'll be able to become a skilled worker in the relevant profession, and then the employers would be would be more willing to accept them. And then for the ethnic minority groups, it's another source of workers. We haven't really tapped into that, and in this regard, um, their language education would also have to be uh, beefed up. Next, about our population deficit. Why is it that women are not willing to um, give birth? Well, we've been working on youth hostels uh, for the singleton young people. All right, uh, they are willing to stay with their parents. But then what about the newlyweds, in particular the young newlyweds? If there is no appropriate accommodation for them, if there is no standalone uh, apartment for them, then they are not interested in getting married. So when you never bother to be, to get married, then how can you have children? So when we talk about uh, pop our population policy and sustainable labor force, there are many ways to solve this problem. Importing labor is a very lazy way to resolve the problem. Thank you. Mr. Albert, uh, Mr. Stephen Ho. Thank you. Mr. President, first of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Kwok Wai Kang for moving this motion. Just now, I've heard many members making or, or speaking on this motion. They are saying that um, um, the source of all evil is importing workers. We have heard a lot about um, uh, this problem, but then is it entirely wrong to import workers? Well, some lawmakers have said that for specific sectors because of the low wages, because of the poor working conditions and long hours, uh, there might be a need for them to hire more workers. All right, uh, we have heard uh, most often today that uh, there are jobs that are not filled and also on the levy. In fact, I'd like to make the following remarks. I hope that the Bureau Director will listen carefully. All right, we have had uh, the situation whereby there is a mismatch. There are jobs that are unfilled and then because we have been imposing this levy on the importation of workers in order to um, in, in order to make sure that this is under control. All right, uh, we also talk about importing talents because we would like to remain competitive. But then is the, is the policy entirely correct? I'm not able to make a judgment here. I hope that the community at large will pass its own judgment on this. 
All right. As far as my industry is concerned, I'm from the fishing sector. There are also jobs that are not filled. I also hope that you will understand this. Well, with importation of labor, we'll be able to make adjustments to the situation. Well, for foreign workers, they do have a value here. For example, for live chickens, over 50 percent of them are bred locally, and then for um, culture fish, uh, it's, it's not just uh, providing food for Hong Kong, it's also helpful to conserving the land. But then because of legislation, because of other concerns like bird flu, their development is uh, restricted. And also, some people may not understand their working hours and also their working conditions while the hours might be long. For example, the chief executive is also uh, planting this uh, dragon fruit uh, in his garden. And then you would know that uh, all right, uh, for the fertilization, that will have to be done between 9 p.m. and uh, 2 a.m. And then for the culture fish, uh, you will also have to catch the fish um, in the small hours of the morning. So who would be prepared to do this? All right, the chief executive would be prepared to fertilize his uh, dragon fruit uh, during the small hours um, of the morning. But then not everybody is willing to do the same. And another issue is uh, land title because workers are not allowed to stay overnight. And then for transportation, well, during the small hours of the morning, how can he um, go back home after work? So you will have to see how you can help. Well, maybe foreign workers can help. And also, if there are more people who are willing to join the profession, then that's good. But then how about the wages? Are they too low? Now, once again, coming to the um, agriculture, sector. All right. Um, you, I can also give you an extreme example for the culture fish. Um, all right. Even if they are offering some $50,000, nobody is willing to join the profession. All right. Uh, in 2010 and 12, well, we've also asked the ERB to help us to offer courses to train up people for the profession. Only one. Only one was enrolled. And then after a month, he also resigned. Huh? He quit the job. So are we going to fold up the entire trade? And as a result, uh, we cannot bust uh, import worker. And also recently, we have been affected seriously by the appreciation of RMB. And then many, in many sectors, uh, the cost has gone up very substantially, and the profit margin is very low. And therefore, in the fishing industry, all right, uh, if we increase prices, that would definitely affect um, our that would definitely affect uh, people's livelihood. So we have to do something about it. I have to commend the administration. Five years ago, they exempted the levy on the supplementary labor scheme. This is a major policy. What's meant by the supplementary labor scheme levy? The purpose is to ensure that uh, when an employer hires a foreign worker, then he will have to pay a levy so that we can use that uh, for training up local workers. And then the work, the employer will have to pay $400 each month to the administration as a levy. And uh, if we hire sufficiently large number of foreign workers, then the sum will be rather sizable. But then we have been told that uh, after the levy has been imposed, uh, despite the fact that uh, the ERB has uh, offered many courses, uh, it has not yielded a lot of success because uh, in some trades uh, they offer courses, but then uh, nobody is willing to join the trade. That's why the administration's initiative by waiving the uh, levy ha should be commended. In fact, uh, for the um, organic farming industry, they've also benefited. Or else, uh, why? Uh, how can we now have uh, so many choices in terms of organic produce? But then after this has been uh, lifted, uh, once again, they are facing this problem. So for the organic farming industry, are they going to be phased out uh, gradually? So we will have to give it more thoughts. So on, re on behalf of the fish fishing and agriculture sector, I hope that we will, have, we will look into the needs of, the tr of different sectors before we roll out uh, the relevant employment policy so that uh, we will have to offer incentives and then there will be a win-win situation. That's the most important thing. Recently, the administration just uh, uh, released this uh, consultation document on population policy and uh, in terms of the levy under the various uh, importation scheme, can you consider 
uh, suspending it for the time being, and then on the way uh, uh, and means of charging this levy, there should be more discussion with the community. And if certain sectors still have to hire foreign workers, then I would have this suggestion to make. All right, for different sectors, because the workers and training costs would be different, and therefore the levy should be more reasonable. For example, you will have to look at the median income for a particular trade. You will have to adjust the rate of levy for different sectors, and there should also be a ceiling. For example, it's uh, four hundred dollars now, and it should be kept at four hundred dollars. And if uh, uh, for your trade is di more difficult, then uh, it should be lower to two hundred or one hundred dollars. And of course, uh, you might say that there is not enough time for you to think about it. And then uh, I just like to say a few more words on the um, levy and so on. And then for the rest of the issue, I hope that the administration. Will discuss with us further. Mr. Kenneth Lowe. Mr. President, according to the CNSD's data, in 2013, there are all the job vacancies increased by 14%, close to 80,000 jobs available as of March this year. And in 2018, according to the manpower projections, in certain sectors there will be a great uh, manpower shortage. Security guards, 50,000. Construction industry, 44,000. And the other sector, 36,000. Despite the job vacancies, I am still against expansion of labor importation. This motion debate is on opposing the expansion of labor importation. And in fact, we do have a number of schemes which imports la allows labor importation in a, an orderly manner. For example, the ASMTP, IANG, and also supplementary labor scheme. We see job vacancies in these sectors. However, there are other sectors with um, reducing manpower demand, and these sectors are dwindling. For example, manufacturing industry. 27,000 jobs will be cut, wholesaling, 8,800. Postal, postal service, 2,300 jobs reduced. And uh, some members talked about youth unemployment. If we don't have a mismatch between demand and supply, on a macro level, I see and I think that at the moment we should not expand labor importation. There is also a suggestion that empl since employers cannot recruit employees, employers should consider why they cannot offer um, make attractive offers. For example, career prospects, work environment, and also wages, and also the public's perception on certain occupations, and uh, finally, enhancing training. If the employers take the shortcut by importing labor rather than um, doing what I mentioned above, it's putting the cart before the horse. Some employers may say that we need to pay high costs and uh, manpower costs um, or labor costs are on the rise. But I think labor importation can in no way reduce business costs. Well, in my profession, over the past two decades, I have seen uh, over a hundred or even a thousand enterprises in terms of their operation. In terms of their operational costs, mostly they, com uh, they, they comprise rental and uh, labor costs. In present circumstances, rental constitute a very large proportion. It poses a great burden on um, the costs that employers have to pay. This will also erode the reasonable reward for employees. And we should not dodge this problem. And let me say something about um, social theories on a macro level, why we should not expand labor importation. Recently, um, I read a couple of books uh, written by Professor Robert Allen um, a social economic professor in Oxford University. I read about the history, and in the 17th and 18th century, 
in Britain and in India, the textile industry was uh, quite um, vibrant. And after, um, uh, now in India, because they produce cotton, and in fact they started uh, textile um, industry long before uh, Britain, but. Well, what I want to say is, if you see labor shortage in uh, the cleaning industry or the security guard industry, have you considered automation or mechanization? In the 17th, 18th century, in UK, they were able to do it because they introduced uh, machinery to combat the rising labor costs. In India, however, because wages were still very low. Um, they did not do so. After the Industrial Revolution, all countries bought textile products from Britain, and the textile industry in India dwindled as a result. There is a social cost behind labor importation. Let us not forget that. What is meant by social cost? Say you have labor shortage, and then you suggest uh, labor importation. This is actually transferring the cost from employers to the so to society. That is for low skilled laborers. When they come to Hong Kong, they uh, may face um, integration problems, and there may be social conflicts. They may have uh, different problems in their daily lives, and how should they be resolved? Are we going to Accommodate them in subdivided flats, or uh, provide them with inadequate housing. I can cite a very extreme example in the U.S. After its independence, many farmers uh, grew cotton in the south side, and then um, the cotton was used to produce cloth, and they um, then. Um, Hired um, slaves, and uh, in the end, uh, there was extreme social conflict over the, over the issue of slaves. Well, those books inspired me, but we need to check, uh, have a reality check. Labor importation may reduce your operational costs, but we need to consider the social costs as well, and we need to think thoroughly. I so submit, Mr. President, Mr. Raymond Chan. Mr. President, Macau government announced yesterday that the $9,000 would be dished out to permanent residents, and for the Central Provident Fund, there would be an injection of $7,000, and each resident, therefore, would get 16000 And I'd like to tell, tell everyone that um, for workers in Hong Kong, you're not so lucky because you don't have um, any cash handouts. Some say that uh, the circumstances of Hong Kong is not the same as Macau. We should not copy from Macau. That's the same for labor importation. So the administration should not use examples of Singapore and Macau. Uh, for Singapore, it accounts for, for Macau. It, uh, for um, imported labor accounts for twenty six percent of the total workforce. That's in, on the first page uh, in this uh, consultation paper. But we should not make comparisons. What about employees in Hong Kong in twenty eleven? The statutory minimum wage was twenty eight. And in 2013, the the um, the uh, um, it increased uh, to 30. And what happens now? There is a task force um, uh, on standard working hours, and uh, the. Uh, uh, fruit of Hong Kong employees' lab um, hard labor uh, is not shared by all, and uh, minim uh, wages have uh, remained low. The minimum, uh, the median wage, uh, remained at uh, ten thousand or to twelve thousand. On the face of it, it seems to have increased slightly, but it could far from catching up with the inflation rate. So, on in real terms, the wages have actually gone down. Um, let's compare the uh, change in wages in various sectors. For low-skilled jobs, um, their wa the wages are increased by 500 to 1,000. Retail industry is regarded as low-skilled. So in 2010, it was um, the median wage was 10,000, comparing to the uh, um, general median wage 12,800. It's still below that. 
So um, that's uh, from the uh, consultation paper released by the Steering Committee on Population Policy last month. So the administration should not make any excuses. Uh, in Chapter 4 of this consultation paper, replenishing our labor force with new sources. Ten pages in Chapter 4. That's the thickest chapter. So you can see the government's intention. 4.12, 4.13, 4.14, all these paragraphs are um, the um, excuse for importing labor. Let me uh, cite uh, one paragraph. Well, uh, importing labor can replenish uh, the tight market or can solve the tight market situation um, in sectors with apparent labor shortage. This uh, just now, the secretary made a reply, and uh, his intention was revealed. There is no timetable and no conclusion on labor importation. If there's only no conclusion, then uh, that means they haven't decided yet. But since he said no timetable, that means they are minded to do it, but they haven't decided when to do it. This paper proposes taking a we seek you approach in talent on talent admission and also labor importation to replenish the low skilled labor force. Um, now the relevant application uh, rose to nine hundred and forty-seven, um, doubled that in uh, twenty eleven, um, nine thousand five um, five thousand nine hundred. What about the end of twenty twelve? Only two thousand four hundred fifteen workers imported. Now with the population aging and the uh, shrinking labor force. We understand the situation. The administration should consider how um, this problem can be resolved. But is importing labor the only solution, or should we ask ourselves what we can do ourselves to resolve the problem? Can we create more job, job opportunities for the local workforce? As said by many members today, over 500,000 women uh, in the age record of 30 to 59 are uh, not uh, participating in the labor force at the moment. So can we implement social policies like uh, um, child care uh, facilities to help these women jo rejoin the labor force? Youth unemployment is also on the high side. Uh, has there been sufficient youth employment policies? We should implement these policies before we ask this question. We ha we need to um, implement the policies locally before we ask whether we should import labor. If the government is not minded to create uh, favorable conditions for our youth, then um, well, uh, you can't blame our university uh, students for uh, openly criticizing our chief secretary. And in one of the paragraphs, 4.3, it said that in certain sectors of catering and retail, um, some experience transient labor shortage with some uh, may be a result of uh, long-term structural problems. So for transient problems, labor importation may be the solution because this is the easiest approach without any um, con thinking. This can solve the problem. Now, uh, we're not trying to uh, exclude the foreigners, but local workers should come first. That is, how should we draw the line? We should engage the public to discuss and come to a consensus. Under the SLS uh, of the Labor Department, it's clearly said that the priority should be given to local workers and uh, their wages and benefits should be ensured. And employers should give priorities to local workers in filling job vacancies and they should take an active approach in training local workers so that they can acquire the skills necessary for filling these uh, job vacancies. That's according to the government statement. Now, has the government's policy changed stealthily through this so-called Thoughts for Hong Kong consultation paper? Through the 10-page um, uh, um, in, uh, uh, in Chapter 4 of this consultation paper.
Mr. Mafun Kwok. President Lee Kubman published the uh, thoughts for Hong Kong consultation document on population policy. Uh, it's about releasing a potential uh, work uh, labor, uh, like housewives and so on, or early retirees. To, and also, there's mention of importing labor to address the shortage of labor. The government said that uh, after four years, uh, starting from 2018, the labor force size will, will start to decline. And um, that, but then every year, there's a 1% increase in population. Now we have to substantially increase productivity. Uh, and we're losing a, a percentage point of increase in the labor force every year. Now Hong Kong economy faces transformation. We need to develop human resources to promote economic development. We need talents on the one hand. We also need skilled workers and low to medium skilled workers. I think the government should, could um, expand human resources through three channels. First, uh, at higher institutions, more resources could be plowed in. Now, we have uh, far f too few uh, university degree places to meet the need. In recent years, um, there's been a call for the government to increase the number of substantive places. I could say there's a consensus, and uh, uh, we should also help uh, train technical staff. And uh, we need to enhance the quality of human resources. The second channel is to release existing potential. The document suggests that, that we should encourage employers to adopt family friendly employment practices so housewives have joined the market, the work market. But then the government is being rather passive, it's not providing um, actual support to homemakers. So uh, the government seems to be paying only lip service. In fact, last year in this council, there was a rel the related discussion. At the time, I asked the administration to review the existing policy in terms of uh, taxation, uh, legislation, child care services, upgrading of community facilities, and uh, the promotion of family-friendly employment practices. I suggested then we should make an improvement in all these areas. The third channel is um, the focus of today's uh, motion, that is ex uh, the labor importation. Now, should we rely on labor importation to meet a uh, shortage in the workforce? There's always been discussion in the past, and um, there are divergent views. Some um, think about the, um, low, the junior workers. They think that uh, the, work, the workers' jobs will be taken away and wages will be suppressed, but then others uh, think from the point of view of employers in industries like catering industries and so on, there is a shortage of staff. Even if employers increase wages and enhance benefits, uh, they don't, they don't, they can't hire anybody. Of course, the government could uh, import labor to uh, relieve the uh, shortage in these areas. For the motion and some of the amendments, they look at issues from the point of view of workers. They point out the disadvantage of importing labor, but there are always two sides to the coin. Importing labor is the quickest way to address, uh, to relieve the shortage of labor. Uh, in the film and cultural sector, there are many imported talents. Immigration department statistics show that from April to September this year, 4,140 cases of a talent admission was, uh, were improved at some 20% are involved, are engaged in uh, cultural and creative industries. So I don't think we should just oppose uh, across the board. But then there are such divergent views. So before the government makes any, any decision, it must um, think it through very carefully. There must be a comprehensive plan and a proper mechanism, and there must be a uh, consensus in the community before importing labor. And priority must be given to local workers, in particular those uh, junior workers and medium level workers. The government should start by collecting data to find out about the shortage position in different industries. And then we could also map up uh, the future of development in Hong Kong and we decide where we need to import labor. And we must also see whether the shortage is time limited. For example, support um, upcoming infrastructure projects. Maybe we could import a um, suitable number of uh, workers for a limited period of time.
the government must also make sure the jobs of local workers are protected. We could uh, make reference to the Singaporean approach, that is, we have um, import uh, labor importation levy. And employers, if they hire more imported workers, they must pay a, high, a higher levy rate. This will minimize the cost difference between local and imported workers. Then we can make sure that labor is imported only to relieve shortage in an industry. It's not to but bring wages down. Now, with an aging population, we have a shrinking labor force. It's a fact. So the government needs to consider all policies to deal with the matter, and the government must take a rational approach in um, importing labor and emitting talents. Otherwise, our competitive edge will be eroded. I don't believe, President, that we should just oppose uh, the importation of labor across the board. That's why I cannot support the original motion and Mr. Pun Xiuping's amendment. As for Mr. Frankie Yick's amendment, there's mention of um, expanding. Um, Labor importation uh, as soon as possible. Now, I don't believe, uh, I don't agree we should uh, implement policy before there's social consensus or before there's a proper mechanism. That's why I have to abstain. On Mr. Lee Chuck Yen's uh, amendment, he proposes four measures. I, I agree to those measures, but then he has in, uh, retained the wordings of uh, opposing expansion of importation limits, so I abstain. I will only support the amendment of Ms. And, and, uh, Ms. Madam Ann Chen. Thank you. It's about 9.25. The, we will continue the meeting until all business on the agenda is completed. Mr. Albert Chen. Mr. President, I speak in support of the original motion, and I am dead against expanding labor importation. Now, it, we are just um, um, favoring a certain class by uh, supporting labor importation. It's, um, Against the interests of local workers, that's my. I must um, make my opposition known clearly. We have to bear in mind the job prospects and the interests of local workers in mind. That must be our starting point. I want to explain why I think it's absolutely ridiculous to propose expanding labor importation. Why is it that is a move to favor uh, employers and major consortia? If you look at figures, President, in Hong Kong. In the past uh, decade or two, we've seen uh, continuous economic growth. GDP in 2000, 12, uh, $1,238.5 billion. By 2013, it's $2,410 billion or so. The increase is some 64.8%. But uh, for the medium wage, in 2000 it was $10,000. By 2013, it's gone up to $13,000. The increase is just 30%. So you can see the GDP has gone up by some 60% for the community as a whole. But for the medium wage, the increase is only 30%. If you also look at the um, number of working poverty and the uh, uh, increase in wage for the low income group. Now, of course, after the standard minimum wage, the situation has improved slightly. But uh, if you look at the economy as a whole, the pie, the pie has gone bigger, actually. But um, the benefits gained by the uh, workforce is proportionally smaller, actually. So because of um, this um, uh, slanted policy and system, so the working population stands to gain less from a bigger pie. So for uh, the working class, they suffer high rents, um, in high inflation. And the general public in particular, the low-income groups are experiencing increasing pressure. If you just look at the number of um, poor people, 2010, 1.17 million. 2013, it's gone up to 1.29 million. So there's a substantial increase. That means the economy has grown on the whole, but the number of poor people has also gone up. 
So if you don't improve the whole system, the taxation system, the social welfare policies, and public policies, and then you just um, say that you want to import, uh, expand labor importation, definitely you are taking, uh, you are um, um, depriving the uh, working class of their interests. So you're just uh, further exploiting the working class. That's why workers and Kong should uh, stand united. They should oppose any political party, any government, or any organization that proposes um, labor importation. In the past, workers don't have any bargaining power. Uh, with the support of DAB and FTU, there's not even the uh, right to strike. Uh, that we had it before 1997, but after the reunification, the FTU was involved too in the nine Hong Kong people of their right to strike. I'd like to point out another ridiculous aspect of this uh, suggestion. Now, we do not have a population policy. We don't have an industrial policy. We do not have an overall economic policy. We don't have any long-term policy. And then we're just talking about labor importation again is preposterous. In many places around the world, they uh, take control of the of immigration to adjust their um, workforce. For example, in some countries, they don't have enough nurses. Then they allow um, nursing immigrants to come into the country. But in Hong Kong, we do not have such immigration policy. We have 150 quota places. The Communist Party holds control of the 150 places to uh, rig votes or to let um, the uh, f uh, family members of the powerful and influential to come to Hong Kong, and then they move on to other countries. They use up the 150 places a day. And you know, in terms of our economic development and our uh, needs in the job market, there is no matching at all with this 150 places. Hong Kong could uh, gain control over the 150 places, then we could adjust the um, number of the, the types of immigrants uh, that will meet our job uh, market needs. Now, for 150 places, Most uh, who come through the scheme are those with little education or skills. So most are just involved in um, uh, labor work or, or semi-skilled work. But in the past few years, we've seen a shift, major shift. Uh, that is, among the 150 one-way public holders, many are age 50 or above, um, so older people. Maybe they try to rig votes, they try to bring in more voters uh, uh, to support their parties. So they're not allowing young people in. They uh, want to bring in older people aged 50 or 60, and then after seven years they could vote. But then this will add substantially to our health care, uh, add to the pressure of our, on our health care system. It will also uh, lessen room for the development of our population. It won't uh, do any good to our economy. Now, because many of the people uh, are 50 or 60 when they come to Hong Kong, that adds to substantially to the pressure on the welfare care system, it affects our development. And social workers are having such a hard time because for such people, they need um, uh, transfer, they need to addition, and so on. They, the social workers will work so hard, so I'm dead against them, importation of labor. Mr. Abraham Shek. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Having heard uh, seven minutes of absurd speech, I want to explain that our society is not under a cultural revolution. We are in the 21st century. It is a harmonious society. It is about sharing our economic benefits. The policy proposed by the administration on importation of labor um, is done from the perspective of creating wealth. Society cannot stop without moving forward. We have $70 billion of projects, and we have 300,000 workers. Can they um, do all these projects? We need to build public housing, build roads, build bridges, build HOS. If they cannot be built, who stand to lose? The people of Hong Kong. Now, 
the usual construction period for a building is three years, but because of shortage of labor, it's lengthened to six years. Who stands to lose? If we engage in class struggle, if we stop the administration from implementing a policy to solve our problem, then this is not right. And the government has become a, a lame duck government. The administration now proposes a forward looking policy. Hong Kong, in comparison with Singapore, Shanghai, Beijing, Macau, uh, can be competitive. Look at Macau. In the past 10 years, they have been developing very rapidly. Uh, how can they do that? They have a population of about half a million, but they imported a lot of labor. They are able to um, overcome the uh, problems which they can't solve themselves. Look at the rapid development of Macau. The citizens of Macau can get $9,000 a year. Fortunately, Albert Chen is not the CE. Otherwise, instead of getting $9,000, we have to pay $9,000 back to the government every year. That's the difference. Now, what he um, said about importation of labor is about class struggle, about uh, giving priority to local uh, workers. Mr. Kwok is right. If we uh, can do it ourselves, we don't need to import labor. But if we need to develop, we can't stand still. We need to import labor. And while importing labor, we cannot allow our local workers to be affected. Local workers should have their jobs first. If they can't get a job, then we shouldn't import workers. And there shouldn't be any decline in wage. From this perspective, we um, should consider medium to long term measures to nurture our own talents. In the construction industry, the uh, construction uh, the Contractors Association and the CIC in 2013 April conducted a study on more than 150 construction sites. Uh, there was a shortage of workers by 15.6%. There should be 65,000 people working, but at that time there were only 59,000. So a shortage of 15.6% or 10,000 workers just on that single day in April. Well, I don't speak on other industries. The construction industry is facing a severe shortage of labor. Uh, just look at the construction of the RTHK building. The estimate increased from $1.7 billion to $6 billion because of rising wages, lengthening construction time. Um, projects will be lengthened and costs will escalate. That will also affect uh, job opportunities for our workers, Hong Kong's development and Hong Kong's status in Asia. Mr. President, I support um, the importation of labor on a limited scale which can keep pace with our economic development. We must not allow under our competitiveness to decline. If we do not move forward, we will move backward. We are facing challenges from Singapore, Macau, Shanghai, Guangzhou. We have to face up to these challenges. We need short-term measures and long-term measures. Thank you. Mr. Wang Yong Man. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, importation of foreign labor is uh, like the God whom I believe uh, he, he, he exists um, forever and ever. Now the speaker of the, um, the uh, for importation of labor has left. 
Now they say uh, they have difficulty in in recruiting local people. There is shortage of labor. They need a lot of time to train up workers. Their short term needs cannot be met. But the union is of the view that there are a huge potential um, number of workers. Importation labor will only drag down the wages. The administration has the supplementary labor scheme. This is a balance. Uh, the interest between workers and the um, uh, bosses. Uh, this system has been effective recently. The administration issued the thought for Hong Kong public consultation paper. Uh, that book, which is well print printed, it says that um, foreign labor can provide the necessary economic and social service. Importation of labor can provide flex flexibility to the businesses. We are therefore concerned that the SARG will use this as an excuse to expand the importation of labor. It is uh, going to switch on the green light for this. Now, every uh, uh, thing is very expensive construction, logistics, retail, um, also caring for the elderly. The wages are very low. Minimum wage is just $30. You really cannot attract people to join these industries if you import foreign workers. And you are uh, just rubbing salt into wound. Uh, the business people want to get profits. Profits come first. And they don't care about the uh, workers. And yet they appeal to morality. Uh, that's really hypocrit uh, hypocritical. Uh, there is no collective labor, and social welfare is not. There is no collective bargaining, and there is not enough social welfare to protect workers when they are unemployed. The situation of workers are suffering seriously. Uh, you uh, talk about competitiveness, but our, the survival of our local workers, the development of our local workers are threatened. I used to quote uh, Lucien. Uh, Lucien uh, people ask for survival and then for development. And if there is any impediment to that, people will overrun this. Uh, their development and survival are undermined. I therefore support uh, FTU's uh, motion moved by Mr. Kwok and oppose importation of labor. Uh, but uh, members on both sides have given their arguments. I want to speak from another perspective to uh, give you some food for thought. The SARG has established the general labor importation scheme and also importation talents, main and talent scheme. According to the consultation uh, paper, uh, the, those uh, imported under these two schemes rose from 72,000 in 2010 to 86,000 in 2012. Local white collar workers are also facing uh, the trouble. And also in the uh, UGC funded uh, universities, they recruited a large number of mainland students, 6,000 in Hong Kong, 20% of the students. According to the uh, Times uh, Education Magazine, the internationalization of Hong Kong youth rating uh, is reduced by 1.4 points. 11 uh, for, um, youth universities recruited mainland postgrad students, and they also they were issued uh, one year Visas and they were renewed. They are renewed from time to time. From 2002 um, uh, until now, more than 20. Uh, from 2008 until now, uh, until uh, 2013, more than uh, 2008, uh, 28,000 students, uh, mainland students, allowed to stay and work in Hong Kong. And on average, in August, uh, 16,500 or 58 percent. You are concerned about the uh, workers. But local universities are recruiting more and more mainland students. This is another way of importing foreign labor. That should not be ignored. Let me give you another example. Uh, Professor Ho of the um, steering committee said this. Now mainland students were one in a ten, one in ten thousand. Uh, Talents, and if, um, in fact, we pay very little in nurturing these talents. 
Now they have the, but in fact, these so-called talents have skills which are no lacking in Hong Kong. The expansion of the it is it go against the SLS. The administration cannot adopt double standards. I hope this Mr. Ho's view does not represent the steering committee's position. Otherwise, it will be a very serious matter. The SALG has to properly regulate the subsidized uh, universities which are recruiting mainland students and the mainland students are allowed to work in Hong Kong. The adverse impact on us is no less than the importation of foreign labor. This is something I want to remind members. This debate will never end. We have had such debates before, and we have very entrenched positions on either side. I hope that this so-called steering committee and this so-called population policy will not touch on this. Otherwise, um, there will be uh, another fight. The secretary tried to explain, but he uh, messed it up. But that's very clear in your paper. You must uh, give us an explanation whether you are considering expanding the importation of labor. If the answer is, the, is yes, then people will fight with you until they die. Thank you. Mr. Frederick Fung. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. President, President, you may recall that um, in CY Leung's election platform, this issue is one of the main issue. He said that uh, he talks about uh, mainland mothers coming to Hong Kong to give birth, and he uses this to attack Henry Tang, and he challenges uh, what he has, what Henry Tang has done. And he said that uh, we've always had this steering committee on population policy, but he did not know why there is no population policy. And he said that uh, if he uh, was re elected, he would require the steering committee to submit a report in three months. But of course, he exaggerated. It's late by over a year. And this is not a population report. It's a 49-page a uh, population policy consultation document is a rehashing of ideas. It talks about uh, insufficient population, how it will affect economic development. He narrows it down to a very uh, small scope to talk about how to uh, um, increase uh, our population and manpower and provide the justification for importation of labor. And this tune has been harped by C. H. Tong. I think they're just um, birds of a, of the same feather, and they just pass on the the the, the, the same idea, and they think that uh, population policy is only a tool to promote um, business development, and everything is to the for the benefit of the business sector. All policies are tools, and behind these policies, you see the rationale of uh, those in power. And they say that uh, there is a trickle effect, as Mr. Donald Zhang said, that uh, in the end the grassroots will benefit. C.Y. Leung said that uh, he cannot eradicate poverty, but through economic development, uh, those in the lowest stratum will benefit. But population pop po policy becomes a tool. It is to only there to serve economic development. Importation of labor is something that uh, those in power would like to see. Labor importation can be done overnight to meet the needs of different economic areas, and they can save on training of manpower. This is short-sighted, and I can boldly say that this um, is at the cause of the lopsided um, policy towards the business sector. There is a serious mismatch between economic development and our manpower. And they try to take the shortcut of labor importation uh, to meet um, late manpower shortage. If we have to use a population policy to build a good society, I think CY Leung is putting the card before the horse. 
grassroots cannot catch up with economic development. They cannot share the fruits of economic development. There is no upward mobility. There is no future for them. If you look at it in a different perspective, labor importation is a tailor-made measure for businessmen. We've been fighting uh, over the years for statutory minimum wage to revert the situation of suppressed labor wage. But there is uh, one review every two years, and there is also um, a, lead, a serious lead time. Starting from the 1st of um, May of 2010 with the statutory minimum wage, the lower tile income in 2011 second quarter uh, showed an increase of 10% compared to the average income of other groups, um, which is 4% higher. But after the effect of the one-off uh, raise in wage, grassroots uh, um, salary has remained low. And over the two years, the wage has only been increased from $28 to $30. And um, the raise uh, lag behind other um, sectors. With the statutory minimum wage, there may be a structural change. Obnoxious trade um, will see their con employment condition improved. And there may be a career path put in place. That is only the natural consequence. If you cannot recruit, you will have to increase wage. And uh, the business sector always advocate that the wages will have to be determined by the market. But the administration wants to take the shortcut for the business sector. They want to import labor. And in a way, it suppressed uh, wage growth. This goes um, contrary to market mechanism. We should not just look at economic development and find ways to increase our manpower and use population policy to import labor, thereby suppressing local wages. I speak in support of uh, Mr. Lee Chuk Yen's amendment. Mr. Lo Wai Kwok. There is a population policy consultation paper, Thoughts for Hong Kong. It has triggered a lot of discussions. The, uh, the document points out that uh, there is a trend. With a dwindling population, the labor partici participation rate will drop from 58.8% in 2012 to 49.5% in 2041. And in June 2013, number of vacancies in the private sector increased by 9.9% every year to 77,000. Vacancies in construction area re re um, has a record high, an increase of uh, over 74%. Over we have an aging population in this uh, sector, and there is a succession problem. There is, a, a, there is an acute manpower shortage. We need to seriously review the policy of labor importation. When it comes to labor importation, a general, uh, the general labor force will worry that uh, for, if it is done without good justification, they will lose their job. Their bargaining uh, power will be undermined. We understand these concerns. The administration has the duty to dispel concern, but we should not negate negate it. There is a need for social and economic development. We need the choice of labor importation. Housing is a serious uh, problem that is plaguing Hong Kong. Um, the uh, labor at uh, the Long Term Housing Strategy Steering Committee said that uh, they will. Have to build uh, 400 and uh, 400, 440,000 to 450,000 units in the coming five, uh, 10 years. If they only look at increasing uh, supply without thinking about whether there is sufficient manpower in the construction industry, that will be a mistake. We have uh, five uh, railways um, being built. We have a Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, and we have the um, Central Wan Chai Bypass. And all these are major infrastructural projects. This only aggravate the manpower shortage. We have uh, there in April this year. There are a number of associations conducted uh, a human resources survey. 
The result shows that there is manpower shortage of uh, at least 15 percent in Hong Kong. Every day, there are about 60 to 70 thousand workers working. There is manpower shortage of about 10 thousand for some trades, say for example, cement, farm work, uh, welders, um, wall, um, curtain, glass wall curtain workers. Uh, there is a, a manpower shortage of 30 to 60 percent. About 50 percent of uh, local laborers are of the age of at least 50. And they will retire soon. Every year, training places can only churn out 4,600 people, and there is a wastage of 25% among newcomers. Manpower shortage uh, will pose serious challenges to the completion of work dates, and it will push up project costs. So we need to seriously consider the need for labor importation. And they should not just blindly object to labor importation, reg uh, neglect, neglecting the um, social economic development. We have uh, an existing mechanism of import labor. Uh, low skilled workers um, can uh, be imported through the supplementary labor scheme with the uh, labor advisory board vetting the applications. It will take half a year to a year in the processing of applications. Say, for example, for some special trades of railway work, it takes 18 months to process the application. When it was approved, those special, those um, workers with special skills are poached to work elsewhere. And the actual number of applications approved is a lot lower. It cannot meet. Need the needs in reality. The labor importation there should not be negated as a whole. The administration should work with the sectors to conduct an um, in depth um, manpower survey to put in place training courses and improve uh, employment condition, work condition to attract new blood. With these necessary measures in place, there is also a, a need to take into account the uniqueness of different trades and uh, put an, uh, prepare a list of labor importation and engage professional groups of the relevant sectors to monitor, coordinate, and work out the uh, number of quotas to prevent abuse. Put yourself in our place. There is an acute manpower shortage in the construction industry because for quite some time when it comes to infrastructural projects and housing projects, there is no uh, comprehensive planning. Say, for example, Central Wan Chai Bypass, uh, the Hong Kong section of the Hong Kong Macau High Bridge, and also the XRL because of political um, dispute and judicial review, uh, projects are delayed. When there is a large amount of uh, work going on, there is manpower shortage from workers uh, to engineers. And when there is not enough work, they will not make enough money. We are facing a lot of challenges, competition from uh, neighboring countries and an aging population within and a, and, and a dwindling labor force. We need sustainable development. We need to be flexible. We need to take into account the current situation and have a rational um, consideration of labor importation. Uh, there was successful experience. Um, the prime a prime example is the airport. We should be forward-looking, take into account demographic changes to resolve the demand and supply imbalance of labor. I also submit. Dr. Kokaki, Mr. President, we all know why we have this motion today. At the beginning, uh, Chief Secretary of Administration, Mrs. Carrie Lam, had to formulate a population policy. We thought that she would do something about the low birth rate. She would consider how to allow young women and young couples 
to alleviate them of their difficulties so that they can raise more children. We thought she might consider how to enhance the quality of our workforce, how to enhance training, etc. After the publication of the consultation document, we discovered that Mrs. Carrie Lam was as short-sighted as others. With the diminishing workforce and the possibility of lowering the quality of our workforce, she adopted a policy that would shake society and divide society, that is, importation of labor. Mr. Kwok Wai Kang and has moved this motion and other members have moved amendments. Let me state some facts. In the past a decade, our commodity prices have escalated. For example, if we are to have a set meal in McDonald's, there was a rise of 58.3%. Rental rose by 47%. Property prices increased by 142.6% in the past decade. It's really crazy. As regards the median monthly income from 2001 to 2011, it remained at $8,000. 25 to 34 years old, better. The males earn more, 12,500 to 13,000. For the females remaining at $12,000. 35 to 30, for 40, 35 to 44 years old, those working for over 15 years and who are in the marriage age and birth delivering rate for the males. Their wages increased from 15,000 to 16,000, a very small rise. I don't know how many young people would be bold enough to raise children. This consultation document is not to resolve the low birth rate, the high property prices, employment problems, mismatch between jobs and workers, training problems, etc. The document proposes labor importation. As many members said, we already have a supplementary labor scheme. We also have the quality migrant admission scheme as well as talent admission scheme. So what are we asking for? The business sector asks for labor importation. We understand that. From the standpoint of the business sector, labor importation is the best way to reduce costs. But why should we do that? The concept of governance of the SARG is ever deteriorating. If we import labor, who will be affected, Mr. President? As those with the least bargaining power, grassroots workers, non-skilled workers, young people waiting to enter the labor market. They don't have much bargaining power. And we talk about labor importation now. The business sector is not talking about the construction industry. They talk about the catering industry, retail industry. Well, they say that even salesmen have to be imported. They also suggest that Shenzhen residents be allowed to come to Hong Kong to serve as salesmen or shopkeepers. Well, Hong Kong society has been more divided. In the past 10 to 20 years, our GDP rose. The government became wealthier. The businessmen have earned a great deal of money. But at the same time, Hong Kong's Gini coefficient is rising. The wealth, the wealth gap is widening. Society has become more unstable. For the very low income groups, they have more hostility against the business community. Under such circumstances, if the government imposes labor, it's actually adding fuel to 
fire. Is it that our society is not chaotic enough? Are we going to have more chaos? The, there are a number of positive ways to, to deal with the labor market. We have to handle job mismatch. We should increase for certain trades and industries incentives, not just higher wages. We should also work on the long working hours, which have actually deterred people from joining, particularly the service industries. The business sector should make use of the present opportunity to rectify past mistakes. The long working hours should be addressed so as to offer more incentives and attractiveness. But I'm disappointed the government has not been playing its role in spotting the problem and provide effective solutions. Rather, it's trying to shift the concept by proposing labor importation to address the long-term manpower shortage problem. Today's debate is precisely an opportunity to allow us to once again reprimand the wrong policies of the government. I hope that uh, the government can turn back uh, at this stage and adopt long-term measures to address the manpower shortage problem. Dr. Fernando Chan, Mr. President, after the publication of the population policy, Professor Nelson Chow already used the word failure to describe the policy. He said that the policy had gone astray. The government only sees trees, but not the whole forest. Mrs. Carrie Lam herself said that the pol population policy faced five major challenges. Number one, to attract more people to the labor market in order to enhance the working population. She mentioned women, early retirees as her target groups. She also mentioned young people. She said that she had to assist new immigrants from China, persons with disabilities and ethnic minorities to rejoin the labor market. President, that sounded very appealing. But in actual fact, for how many years have we been saying all these? She said she would like to release the labor force of women such that more women can work in the job market. Yet, if there's no child care, no nursery services, no family-friendly working environment, how can they be assisted? We now see many families with women who would like to work. Unfortunately, the traditional role of women is that of a carer. And the traditional policy does not pay attention to women. She also mentioned young people joining the labor market and new job types. But the unemployment rate of our young people now stands at a double-digit figure. So what opportunities are we offering them? For many trades and industries, they are a dead end for our young people. There's no employment ladder. There's no upward mobility. Well, we want to assist the PWDs, the ethnic minorities. Well, for how many years have we been talking about all these? For the PWDs, we ask that we have a quota system like uh, what they do in overseas jurisdictions. They said no. We also asked for a certain percentage of uh, the overall working population to be taken up by PWDs. We are told that the percentage now stands at 2%. But can the government require statutory bodies and subvented organizations to set a certain percentage? The government does not even set an indicator. We said many times 
The first thing to do is to set indicators, and the government, the public sector, the subvented organizations should take the lead, and that should be extended to the business sector. For the multinational companies, they are willing to accept this quota system because back in their own jurisdictions, they have such a system. Look at Disneyland. They have to observe the indicators locally. That is, 45% of the employees have to be PWDs. For the government, honestly speaking, we did some calculation for you previously. You told us that 2% of civil servants are with disabilities. But in fact, they were not disabled upon first recruitment. They became PWDs while they served in the civil service. And then we offer another alternative to you. You say you want to unleash labor force. We say if you want to extend this to the business sector, you should require the business sector to employ a certain percentage of PWDs, say 2%. If PWDs cannot serve in certain job types, you can ask them to use the lowest MPF contribution to employ PWDs, single parental women, ethnic minorities, elders, etc., the relatively vulnerable groups. You can procure services from the social enterprises. That's tantamount to indirectly creating job opportunities for these people. And then you also say no. That's not possible. In fact, many organizations are willing to do so, but you are dragging their feet. You are only engaged in empty talk. So the so-called first challenge is false. You're not interested and not dedicated to address it. Second. You started to say that we need to enhance education and improve training in order to reduce mismatch and the value of vocational education should be reestablished. Well, who killed all our vocational training schools as well as skilled training schools? Originally, in our secondary schools, after secondary three, there were different stages, but the Education Bureau changed everything. Number three, to import outside talents and to introduce the labor importation mechanism. That's the real crux of the consultation document. You mentioned creation of a conducive environment to assist people to raise children. That's also empty talk. And finally, you would like to give elders more opportunities. You mentioned silver hair market. All these are virtual. The only real proposal is to import labor, to suppress local wages, reduce opportunities for local employees to reduce the opportunities to improve the living environment, work environment, and career prospect of local employees. Mr. James Tian, President, I joined this council and the former council for many years with regard to the importation of labor issue. From time to time, it would be raised. All right, as employers, they often said that uh, they had difficulty recruiting workers, and then for those from the grassroots or representing labor unions, uh, they would be against it. But then looking at the situation worldwide, all right, if an employment rate is very low, let's say 3.3 percent, and in some countries they say that uh, it's almost uh, full employment. All right, even if it's not full employment, 3.3 percent is still a very low rate. And if it's been the case for a long time, then it shows that uh, you are not able to recruit enough people. Then. Uh, even if you are willing to increase wages, will that work? All right, you'll just be hiring the guy working next door. So by increasing wages, you're actually um, recruiting the bus driver. And then the bus driver, if they have their wages up, then we are actually 
recruiting people from someone else's um, operations. So we should look at whether or not uh, whether or not there are vacancies not filled, and uh, and then to what extent should we be importing workers? All right, if unemployment rate is standing at six or seven percent, then of course uh, there is no justification for us to claim that there is a labor shortage. And also, after the importation of workers, does that mean that our consortiums and the business sector will definitely benefit, and then the grassroots will stand to lose? Actually, we are talking about building more public housing. I do not see, um, well, according to the administration's target of 60,000 plus in the next few years, well, given the current figure of um, construction workers, as some members have said, how can we complete so many flats? And then again, it will be those who would like to own their own homes who will be hardest hit. All right, if we are serving the grassroots, we've been asking the administration to build more public housing. And then for public housing sites, they are larger. And it, can we not uh, do what we did for the airport so that we can have uh, quarters for several hundred workers? And then there can also be canteens. They do not need to commute between their, ho their uh, homes and uh, their workplace. So. If they are paid uh, um, somewhat higher than statutory minimum wage, then uh, that would be okay. And if you can complete the flats uh, quickly, then it will be the community at large who will be benefiting, and the grassroots will also, will also benefit. On the other hand, in the private sector, whether it's uh, hotels or business or commercial buildings, all right, without workers, you can't build the buildings. And sometimes when I look at the so-called uh, traffic accidents, Bus drivers, mini bus drivers, uh, they have to work long hours. And then, whenever there is a vehicle accident, well, even, well sometimes uh, those involved uh, would be in their 50s or 60s. There, there are very few young people joining their profession. In Singapore, they've also imported many young drivers from the mainland. They are just uh, in their 30s. And then, after they've been recruited, um, buses will become safer. And then, for the lost trips, the number of the number would also come down, so the grassroots would also benefit. Yes, a few members also refer to those with disabilities and so on. So I think we can only try our best to help them. I don't think for the PWDs, if their employers have this quota, all right, if they are genuinely contributing to the companies, well, these companies are mainly hiring them in order to help the disadvantaged they don't they don't really rely on the disabled well they always have to bear in mind the cost effectiveness and uh, very often for an employer hiring a person with disabilities he will have to get someone else to support him so uh, these are just support measures and Mr. Lee Chet Yen also said that uh, we will have to increase childcare services and also uh, after school uh, care services so that uh, housewives or homemakers can be released um, into the market. But then for kindergartens or nurseries, they also have to have uh, people running the operations. And then where would these people come from? Unless you say that uh, for these nurseries or childcare centers, we can import workers so that they can run the childcare centers and then more housewives can then go back to the labor market. But then in doing so, you will also have to fill up the vacancies, or else who would be running these nurseries and childcare centers. That's why this afternoon we also moved another motion debate. We were talking about the Shanghai Free Trade Zone, and then Hong Kong is uh, losing its uh, advantage in terms of both hardware and software. All right, we haven't put up the hardware yet, and then um, nobody is using it. All right, uh, that's the case for the West Kowloon Cultural District, and then for the cruise terminal is uh, now being commissioned. And then for the uh, Hong Kong Macau Jew High Bridge, all right, they have to stop before they can enter Hong Kong. And then for the XRL, is again the same. All right, I've been to Shanghai recently. I didn't go to the Free Trade Zone. I went to Hong Chiao, and then Hong Chiao Airport, Hong Chiao, Hong Chiao XRL, and then there's an expo with five blocks, and every block is the same size as our HKCEC, with uh, 500,000 square feet. And together, you're talking about uh, half a million square feet. Uh, it's the largest sum um, in the world. So who would be building this uh, complex? 
Well, in fact, uh, they're talking about 10,000 imported workers. So they all work at Hong Chiao to build the convention center. And then in four years' time, they managed to complete that. And then as soon as it commissions, all right, uh, the expo business uh, um, booms. And then as a result, they managed to organize a number of uh, expos. So I think we have a lot of problems, and many of these are political in nature. And uh, many of these issues have been set aside. All right, if the um, staff side and the employ and the employers continue to argue, all right, uh, one side said yes, one the other side said no, and then many investors would just uh, go to the mainland. All right, uh, they have the workers, and then they can build up, they can put up the hardware, and then they can also hire the professionals from elsewhere. So they have the software too, and then how, if Hong Kong continues like that, then the Shanghai Free Trade Zone is not what we are most concerned about. It's about ourselves. Uh, we are in, we are engaged in some infighting, and we Hong Kong people will be making Hong Kong less competitive. That's the problem. Mr. Charles Peter Mock. Thank you, President. I'm grateful to Kwok Wai Kong for moving this motion. I think uh, this is a controversial subject, and of course the labor sector would be against it, and the business sector would of course uh, be all for it. In fact, uh, this is not as divided as it might appear. Hong Kong people are very rational for workers. Nobody would like to see imported workers to crash the rice bowls, but then we again see a mismatch. There are jobs that are unfilled, and then as a result, one person will have to take up several jobs. So is it that we are always against it for the employers? Of course, uh, most of them would support the importation of workers because there are jobs uh, or vacancies unfilled. But then many employers are also aware of this. Uh, there are problems managing these foreign workers. That's why, well, even if you import workers, there are also additional costs that might be incurred. That's why if you look at this consultation document on thinking uh, or thoughts for Hong Kong, well, for the labor sector, uh, there is some uh, undertones here, as has been read out uh, this evening. All right, in the construction sector, K Ring, retail, uh, the uh, the uh, residential care services, and so on. All right, they said that because of the continuing uh, decline in the birth rate, the labor force is uh, dwindling, and uh, more younger people are going for higher qualifications. And only a few, or very only the minority, would be prepared to go into the low skill <laughs> trades. But then, is it true? Because uh, I can still recall that when we discussed the issue of uh, development for the youth, apparently that's not true, or else the graduation, graduate schools will not have difficulty recruiting students. And uh, for many young students, uh, they are not able to pursue further education. In other words, they are not going for academic uh, qualifications, and therefore we will have to offer them with vocational training. So the problem is not as described in the consultation document. I think the document is biased in this sense. So is it that uh, nobody is willing to take up these low-skilled jobs, or is it because of other reasons? If these people are not able to take up high-skilled jobs, and after importation of workers, all right, the employer's uh, problem is gone. But then uh, what happens to these people? So uh, do they have to go for CSSA, and therefore the, for the work for the uh, importation of worker uh, proposal? I think it's a pseudo subject. Well, yes, indeed, uh, there is a mismatch. There are jobs that are not taken up, and there are also people who are unemployed. So it's a mismatch problem. If we do not proactively solve this problem, if we just think that uh, importing uh, foreign workers can solve the problem, in particular for the low-skilled jobs, is not sustainable. Well, in the administration's paper, it also says that uh, in some trades, they are low-skilled uh, trades, for example, retail and also catering sector. All right, in the catering sector, if you hire a chef with specific skills, he can cook. Uh, different uh, cuisines and so on, but then for dishwashers, if you have to hire a foreign worker, then you will then say that uh, you will have to hire them with a uh, median wage. All right, uh, where would he stay or where would he live in subdivided units? So these these are also not sustainable. And also in some trades, for example, transportation and also logistics, are you going to import worker for as drivers? So would you would you also creating would you also be creating some danger? And also there are some skills uh, that are not uh, readily available in Hong Kong. 
All right, they are already uh, importing workers. For example, we have the uh, admission scheme for mainland talents and professionals, and also the quality migrant admission schemes, and so on. And even for the um, unskilled workers, there are already avenues available for importing workers. And therefore, if we just uh, substantially increase uh, the number of uh, foreign workers, if we just uh, relax the schemes uh, across the board, then the administration will be attaching less importance to training up local talents, and employers would just uh, try to cut costs in the short term by importing workers. Well, for those of us who have been overseas or right, uh, for the uh, cleaner uh, uh, or the uh, garbage collector, their pay would be higher than us. And uh, if somebody working as um, a steel uh, uh, or bar or bar ten, uh, bar bender, if his pay is uh, better than mine, then what's wrong with that? So um, if we need to import workers, then we should be doing that, or else uh, we should not be doing that. We should not just uh, raise this as a problem. The consultation document also refers to the importation of uh, low-skilled workers, and they, it says that uh, we will have to make reference to the uh, foreign domestic helper scheme. I think uh, we are creating even worse uh, working conditions. For example, for uh, a foreign domestic helper, he is a living mate, and so his her accommodation is provided for by her employer. But then um, for the imported worker, he might not be able to afford a subdivided flat, and then there will be more problems. For example, does he have the right of a boat in Hong Kong? So that would, also, that would again be uh, uh, setting up another time bomb. So if according to the definition, Mr. Kwa Wai is referring to um, the the workforce, and uh, if th by that he means uh, unskilled workers, and of course uh, we have to consider other situations, for example, for managers and so on. We might need to uh, import uh, these professionals. But then uh, I asked Mr. Kwa Wai Kang whether or not he would like to include all job types and uh, different uh, classifications and so on. Mr. Kwa might care to explain a bit further later. But then I think we can also support him because. You said that you're just uh, against expanding the uh, Im foreign workers' importation scheme. You are not stopping it or suspending it altogether. That's why I think I can support that. And then for Mr. Frankie Yik, you referred to several trades, including the low-skilled uh, labor-intensive uh, jobs. I'm not in favor of um, importing workers for those trades. That's why I would agree with some colleagues in that uh, we will have to see how we can uh, release the manpower in Hong Kong, and uh, I'm afraid uh, importing workers is not sustainable. And in Mr. Lee Chek Yen's amendment, he also talks about uh, some support measures for workers. I am also in favor of that. These are my remarks. Does any member wish to speak? Mr. Lang Kwa Hong. Well, on the issue of labor importation, The uh, employer side, uh, of course, would put it nicely. We need to find a solution to this problem. By importing labor, it can help um, our economic development. And then the uh, fruit can be shared. And uh, I have um, been putting up with uh, all this talk. Now we have. Um, Experience the trough well from 1998 to 2003, and we had all the talks about um, making um, uh, staff redundant. And then, starting from 2004, we had steeper and it's been 10 years. Economic growth well, somebody cited it just now. Comparing to the improvement. Uh, in wages for low skilled workers, well, there is a wide gap, which means that during good times, low income earners would not receive a pay that is packed to economic growth. So as we can see from the figures, you reap huge profits during the good times and during bad times. You just make people redundant. 
that means for the for this so-called uh, backup uh, manpower, well, after they are sacked, they can only get uh, lower-paying jobs. And now you don't have backup. That's why you are importing labor. You are so shameless. Honestly, um, I don't think workers would object to it, but that's the case for all four key industries. The construction industry, Let's look at the bar benders. What happens when their daily wage drop from fifteen hundred to nine hundred a day? The point is, we have all um, pro construction projects crammed in at the same time. Government projects and the, and those in the private sector. Don't say they're getting in your way. The administration has no basic economic knowledge. During economic recession. Infrastructure projects should be implemented to create jobs and also to lower costs during deflation that was uh, in Sich Tong's era. And yet, uh, everything was cut back then. There was no governance at all. Everything was in favor of the business sector. If we could retrain staff, we could implement infrastructure projects during economic downturn. We wouldn't see what's happening now with the labor force. All right, so we have lost so many workers in Hong Kong. And now, Mrs. Carrie Lam um, has been tasked to do this, and actually, the devil is in the details. Uh, you talked about um, the uh, shrink, uh, dwindling labor force. Well, just don't parrot uh, others. You're talking about the uh, aging population and its effect on Western societies, not us. The, our problem instead is that the economic success goes largely to the wealthy, um, dividends, rental, property prices, etc. Hong Kong ranked the top in uh, these aspects. And um, exploitation goes on. What we're trying to do now is to defend ourselves. When you suggest expansion, we say no. So what's the point here? Let me read it out. Food, retail, construction, what sectors are they? What jobs are they? How many years of training do they need? If we start now, how long would the training take? Dishwashing, retail, how long would tra training take? Well, if you um, raise the wages, would uh, people take up the jobs? If you don't. Have a pay rise. How can we change the situation of the wealthy reaping of uh, all the economic success? So how can you be responsible to workers? My position is very clear. It's like the Venice merchant, um, uh, the Shakespeare's Venice um, merchant in Venice. After um, I uh, take out a loan, I need to share a pound of. Um, my flesh, and you mustn't do that. You mustn't um, deprive the uh, low-skilled worker of his interest. If you can do that, I won't oppose you. But you can't give th this undertaking. There is no uh, social consensus. There is uh, there is no social contract. So, Mr. Zhang, Secretary, can I? Ask you to say this: If unemployment rate increases after importation of labor in those four sectors, and if people lose their jobs, will you step down? If uh, will you take this bet? No, you won't. It's a waste of time. You say I'm not going to uh, affect you. Give me a pound of flesh. Uh, I am bleeding. I'm sorry, but if you can. Uh, 
um, take my flesh and I won't bleed, then of course I can give it to you. Uh, for those opposing this motion, they should come out. If this is implemented in future, and if wages go up or people lose their jobs, uh, will you will you have some uh, head roll um, head rolling, Mr. Vincent Fang, Mr. President? In recent years, Hong Kong's economy has been stable, and unemployment rate um, has uh, stood at uh, some three percent for years. It's a is a good thing that we are almost at full uh, uh, employment. However, we're going to the other extreme. There are jobs available, but um, n nobody to fill the vacancies. The situation is actually very serious. In June this year, according to the CNSD information, there are seventy eight thousand job vacancies. 10% uh, more than the same period last year. For these sectors experiencing the most severe manpower shortage, um, they are uh, respectively construction, retailing, catering, and uh, elderly care services. Especially for low skilled jobs, uh, shortage is the most serious. According to the survey conducted by the uh, um, association for retail in uh, industry, for a long period of time, there have been uh, over 10,000 job vacancies. That means um, they are, uh, they're unable to recruit workers. And even if they offer higher wages, there are jobs that uh, no locals would like to take. For example, carers for elderly homes. No, um, well, people don't prefer this obnoxious uh, job um, because this job is also very tough. This has to do with the manpower mismatch. In particular, after implementation of the statutory minimum wage, many people switch to uh, easier jobs like um, security guards or uh, clock mates, and uh, um, we have a fix. Well, we have a stable population size. So when the work environment is less favorable, employers find it hard to recruit workers, and this. A manpower shortage will also cause the quality of work to be affected. For example, public housing. And uh, any delay will cause a later intake. Um, and also for retail industry, the service for customers will be affected. And who is going to suffer? Hong Kong people is going to suffer. So on this. Um, structural problem, which is getting more serious. Hong Kong people must not wait. In the recently published consultation paper on population policy, there is a suggestion on uh, labor importation as a short-term measure to relieve shortage, and I support it. There are sectors that um, experiencing uh, manpower shortage, and uh, this should be uh, implemented as a special measure. Without affecting the employment situation of local workers, labor importation should be expanded on an appropriate scale. The government also says that the interests of local workers should be given priority when um, labor ex importation is expanded. We also agree we should have we should consider apart from Looking after the interests of local workers, we should also consider the economic development in Hong Kong. And Mr. Frankie Yick has made it clear. The labor sector always complains employers of giving low wages, and they suggest that uh, higher wages can solve the problem. But basic and elementary economic theory tells us that if the price of flour is higher than the bread, or if the the price of flour is high, then the price of bread will be high. Even if high wages are offered, you can only um, headhunt um, workers from other sectors, but not attract fresh blood. And as far as the global economy is concerned, we see this situation with increasing wage costs. 
the uh, SMEs can't survive in such an environment. They face huge pressure and um, indirectly it helped uh, larger corporations in monolo monopolizing the market. As you can see, um, in major economies you see large chain stores but not small shops. For those opposing labor importation, in the end, Hong Kong will suffer. Workers will remain workers. The labor sector should not be worried that imported labor will take away locals' jobs because the decision um, it, um, lies in the hands of employers. We can call it uh, to a halt any time. Now, according to the consultation paper, Hong Kong's population is aging and uh, labor force uh, in terms of this ratio to uh, overall population will continue to reduce. And the dwindling labor force will affect our um, economy. And by if we only import labor by then, we will lose our competitive edge. We must plan in terms of the pop size of, or pace of population growth and the demands from sectors before we can decide what talents we need and how many we need. This is the responsible attitude. Otherwise, our society will be affected. I so submit. Mr. Kok Him, President, labor importation has always been a controversial issue. At the end of last month, the government published the consultation document on population policy, the labor sector queried uh, if uh, it was just to pave the way for importation of labor. In any case, with an aging population, uh, we should have a rational discussion in the community on labor importation. The constitution document uh, talks about enhancing uh, labor importation pol measures. It's uh, really about the low-skilled workers. Now, if we import low-skilled workers, we have to be even more careful as when we admit uh, talents. Because in a knowledge-based economy, it's not easy for low-skilled workers to find work. If the government just um, rushes to expand labor importation, then the low-skilled workers will be the first to bear the brunt. If we consider it from an economic angle, Labor importation is definitely something good. Because the more, the, uh, the bigger the labor force, the more it could promote economic development. But then the cost is that there will be uh, increased confrontation between local workers and employers, and that could lead to social conflict. So. Labor importation has to be elevated to the political level for consideration so that we wouldn't just be pursuing GDP growth blindly without regard to the importance of um, fostering social harmony. There is need to strike a balance. We have to be cautious on the one hand and ensure the interest of local workers will not be undermined. On the other hand, we need to maintain flexibility to make sure there is stable development of the economy. Now, in the labor market, uh, many jobs, there are jobs not filled. And that's the main reason why the business sector pro uh, pro uh, pro proposes importing labor. But then the labor sector says that as long as you increase wages and improve fringe benefits, jobs will be filled. Well, both parties, the employees and employees, have a point, but um, the, the um, argument is one-sided. Now, since the implementation of standard minimum wage, there's always been a shortage in some sectors, like uh, the security service sector. Um, there's a, a lot of new blood joining the security services sector. That proves that if you increase wage and improve benefits, uh, then jobs uh, could be filled. But then there are other cases where even if you increase wage or improve benefits, you still can't find people to fill the vacancies. Um, the one cl classic example is, as many members pointed out, 
Many restaurant owners claim they are offering $16,000 to hire a dishwasher. Still, they couldn't hide anyone. What is the reason? Um, it's because um, after the implementation of minimum wage, many dishwashers became security guards or other jobs um, that are less demanding. You know, um, dishwashers that work in a hot, humid kitchen all the time and it's physically demanding, so it's um, an obnoxious job type. But of course, if um, a no restaurant owner ha uh, offers $40,000 to hire a dishwasher, I'm sure many people would rush to take up the job. But of course, such a wage level is unrealistic. It simply cannot happen. And then there are some eating establishments which have failed to hire dishwashers. So they have to buy dishwashing machines or they have to hand uh, over their, uh, their crockery to a dishwashing factory. So that could uh, at least resolve part of the problems. But then there are other obnoxious job types like um, carers in elderly homes. Now, of course, this job type cannot be replaced by machinery. So some private homes have no choice but to hire old people to take care of old people. There's an elderly home in Tokwa Wan. It hires two retired workers over 40, 70 years of age to take care of old people. I know a, a lady uh, receiving CSSA. She's uh, taken a course, a certificate course uh, for carer training. After she graduated, she should uh, go to the elderly home to work. There were over 10 in the class. But after graduation, only two to three actually joined the trade. What happened to the others? They'd rather become home helpers because they're paid more and they don't have to face um, a large number of um, old people. They don't have to take care of uh, um, their um, fe um, to clean up uh, their, their feces and so on. And so local workers are not willing to become carers in elderly homes. Then in this case, then we should have a rational discussion as to whether we should expand labor importation. Well, but then, of course, there's also still a lot of potential in our population. Um, new arrivals, ethnic minorities, persons with disabilities. If the government could provide training and provide support, then the, these people could become new blood to the labor force. I re uh, read about a complaint. There's a new arrival. Uh, she graduated from a teacher's college. And then uh, when she came to Hong Kong, she took a uh, course in home, uh, for home helpers. But because there's not a um, qualification mechanism, so the uh, pay uh, um, and uh, that the lady's uh, education qualification was deemed to be that of form free, and it's very frustrating for new arrivals. That's why the government should uh, implement new policies to pro to encourage new arrivals to join the job market. Thank you, Ms. Alice Mack. Now I'd like to say this. I think we should all stay calm. The business sector and labor unions may have different positions on the matter, but we have to face up to a f to the reality. It is true that there is a group of young people and um, elementary workers who fail to find work. Mr. Tommy Cheung of the Liberal Party said that the FTU um, wrongly accused um, the business sector, including the small businesses. Now the um, in, in industrial accident figures is true. In two thousand nine, there were three thousand cases, seven thousand cases. In twenty twelve, that gone up, that that dropped to three thousand cases. And Tommy Jung uh, said that um, we ro accused them wrongly, and he asked how come the uh, labor unions didn't do anything. You can tell from the figures we have done a lot of work. That's why 
number of uh, injuries at work uh, cases has come down. I think it's actually the Census and Statistics Department that has wronged him. Why doesn't he look at the figures of the Census and Statistics Department? In the past 10 years, wage in the catering industry has dropped by 13.4%. Uh, These are the figures provided by the Census and Statistics Department. So uh, maybe you have to check with the uh, Census and Statistics Department if they have got the figures wrong. So uh, t Mr. Tommy Jones said that we have wronged him, but we haven't. We're just um, trying to depict the phenomenon. The fact is um, um, real increase in wage is a negative figure. It's um, minus 13.4% compared to 10 years ago, and they work ex exceedingly long hours. Every month, the medium wage, uh, the medium um, work duration is 30, 54 hours. But I agree with Mr. Tom Lee Jung, that for the catering industry, the profit margin is thin. I agree. Why? Because in the past 10 years, rentals have gone up by 7%. But it should be longer. Why is that 7%? Because uh, in 2003 there was SARS, and in 2008 there was the financial tsunami. That's why the average was lower. But if you look at um, rentals um, for retail business in the past four years, there's a double-digit uh, increase every year. So with um, huge expenses on rentals, be it the catering industry or the retail trade, of course they face um, difficulties. Of course their margin is thin. But is, it, is that a reason to justify exploiting workers? Another colleague, Mr. Um, Michael Tian, said that for the elderly care services, uh, every time we talk about Importative labor, we refer to this trade uh, because they couldn't hire people. And Mr. Michael Tan, there's a 70 year old taking care of an 80 year old. And he said uh, well, he, we should also do a TV series on a poor, poor boss uh, taking up a challenge. Well, it's not a show. Uh, I'm sorry, many workers are working long hours. When you um, are shooting a TV episode, they're still working. They're still working hard. And here we're talking about a serious issue, a solemn issue of uh, labor importation. It's not about um, just a uh, uh, bickering as if, well, you try to be a boss and if you're that good, smart. But let's come back to the crux of the matter. For the elderly care services industry, they're not able to hire people because working condition is so poor. Again, at the root of the cause of the problem has to do with you, uh, Secretary, because there's a problem with the policy. So why don't we try to rectify the problem at the policy ref, uh, level? We should, encourage, we should give us subsidy to carers, and we must also improve elderly care services so that the working condition of carers could improve. Do you think that even uh, if you just hire a um, foreign domestic helper or um, imported worker, then elderly persons living in the homes would get good service. You know, you hire an um, imported worker, of course his, uh, it's, it will be cheap, uh, he'll, but uh, they will be still working over 10 hours a day. Do you think they're going to uh, have patience in taking care of elderly? If you want elderly people to enjoy good quality of care in the homes, then I th you have to t join us in telling government you have to uh, do better with your long-term elderly care policy. Now, many said that um, uh, for many industries, they're not able to um, get uh, young people to join them. Young people are not interested in blue-collar jobs. Uh, for physically demanding work, uh, young people don't want to take that up. Yes, these members have um, depicted the social phenomenon, but then they're saying that uh, importation of labor is a solution to the issue. Now, if our young people are not interested in these uh, job types, should we not do something right to improve the working condition of these industries, enhance their job prospects and promotion prospects so young people see a future in these trades? We shouldn't just suppress wages, and if, if that doesn't work, we'll import labor. So who's being negative here? Some business sector 
friends said that the uh, labor unions are against the uh, labor importation because we are being negative. But then you're not doing any training. You just want to import labor. So who's uh, being negative? And I hear a lot of fallacies today. They say that well, if the, the city is to develop, we must move forward, and we should import labor. If you're against import importation, uh, labor importation is standing in the way of uh, development. Now, these are all flawed arguments. It's, they're just trying to tell you that uh, imported workers are cheap and good, and and so that means that we want uh, to see development. We must exploit workers. And others say uh, fl if flour is expensive, cross bread will be expensive. That's why we cannot afford to pay high wages to workers. But have you heard the um, uh, good Chinese wisdom? You, you know, if um, elementary workers don't get work, uh, they even if um, food uh, prices are low, they still could not afford to buy anything. So people if become even poorer. So when you want to support labor importation, we must first look at the fact that many elementary workers don't get work, and there's a serious unemployment problem with young people. Thank you. Does any member wish to speak? Mr. Ko Wai Kang, you may now reply. Uh, and speak. Uh, you may now speak on the amendments. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank Mr. Pun Siu Ping, Mr. Li Chao Yim, Mr. Frankie Yeg, Ms. Chen Lai Wan for moving the amendments. Um, as for Mr. Pun Siu Ping's amendment, uh, his, uh, he adds to my motion. Uh, he reminds everybody that there is already an established mechanism for labor importation uh, that addresses the issue raised by the, the um, representatives of the business sector, they have a misunderstanding. We oppose the expansion of labor importation. There is already a mechanism. We are not opposing importation of labor across the board. I therefore support Mr. Pun Siu Ping's amendment. He has helped me a lot. As for Mr. Li Chak Yen's amendment, he has said, um, release Hong Kong's potential labor force, and he has made a number of uh, proposals. These are the measures the administration should have done but have not done. Although, although they, this, they are not comprehensive, we still support Mr. Li Chaoyan's amendment. As so for Mr. Frankie Yik's amendment, Mr. Yik, like other uh, business representatives, uh, puts emphasis only on economic development. And he has not studied whether there is a real shortage in different industries. In order to cut costs, um, employers cut training resources and blindly ask for expansion of importation labor. They want to cut costs, and they ask for importation labor. Their eyes uh, grow. Uh, Glows when they hear importation of labor. We cannot support that, and we oppose the expansion of importation of labor. And finally, Ms. Chiang Lai Wen's amendment. Ms. Chiang's amendment has put down something uh, that uh, quite pleasant, such as enhancing uh, training, introducing family-friendly measures, release potential into labor. Uh, market and helping the ethnic minorities, but at the end of the day, she has misunderstood our motion. She uh, crossed out the word oppose, and therefore we abstain. Thank you, Mr. President. Secretary for Welfare and Labour. 39 members have spoken this evening. They were quite eager um, to speak and it shows that this is an important issue. We have to look at this issue rationally. We have to take into account um, changes of the labor market, changes in the situation, the uniqueness of um, various trades and um, unique manpower demand of individual trade and um, social economic situation. We need to look at how ways to release potential labor into the labor market. We need to attract youngsters to join the labor 
uh, force. We have to train them. We have to help them with um, job matching. And our emphasis is to first meet the needs of local worker with a de decreasing population or with a de decreasing birth rate our labor force will shrink for certain types of work say for example retail catering healthcare and construction we have acute labor shortage in the past 2 years because of strong domestic demand and flourishing in uh, inbound tourism, there is a serious uh, manpower shortage. Um, there is an unemployment rate of 3.3% in the third quarter of this year. Basically, it is full employment. There is high manpower demand and with the implementation of mandatory minimum wage. For elementary workers, uh, their income has increased. In June this year, the nominal wage increase reaches 19.4%. For those in the service industry, it it is as high as the 28.3 percent. Deducting inflation, um, increase in real term is 4.4 percent and 12.1 percent, and it shows that uh, there is an improvement of uh, salaries for elementary workers. Of course, for some industries, the manpower shortage is transient. It is related to our economic cycle, whereas for others, it's a long-term structural problem. And on the macroeconomic level, in the past two decades, Hong Kong's econ economy grows by about 4% in real terms every year. About 1% is of the growth is brought by uh, growth of uh, our labor force, whereas the remaining 3% comes from an increase in productivity. With a decreasing labor force, unless there is an increase um, to productivity, our well, economy cannot maintain a similar growth rate. Well, uh, we will only look at. We will first provide a more job opportunities for local labors. And as I said at the outset, when we talk about supplementary or in labor importation, we will insist on the three basic um, premises. First, we do not jeopardize interest of local workers. We do not deprive local workers of job opportunities, and we do not suppress local wages. These three premises remain unchanged. Local labor has always been the cornerstone and, um, and and our asset in economic development. In the past few years, our economy grows rapidly thanks uh, to our, flex our flexible labor force. We reckon that starting from 2018, our labor force will start, our population will start to decrease, and this is a great challenge. If we are to maintain our competitiveness, if we are to maintain our con sustainable development. Uh, we have to, under the premise of not harming the interest of local labor and to keep uh, the pool of local talent, uh, keep, uh, maintain our competitiveness, and we have to strike a balance. And I think, I hope that there will be rational discussion in the community. We will all be pragmatic in order to find a solution that is in the interest of Hong Kong as a whole, so that we can face the challenges and create a win-win situation. I so submit. Thank you. Mr. Prince, you can please move your amendment. Mr. President, I move my amendment to Mr. Cox's motion. I now propose a question to you, and that is that the amendment moved by Mr. Pun Xiaoping to Ms. Kuo Kang's motion be passed. I now put a question to you as stated. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question, Mr. Andrew Leung claims the division. The division may be able to ring for five minutes.
こういうところで決っちゃうんだよね Putting begins. Please check your votes. If there is no query, voting is closed. Results is paid. Members returned by FCs 27 present, 11 for, 11 against, 5 abstained. Members returned by GCs 31 present, 24, 30 against, 7 abstained. The question is not agreed by a majority of each of two groups of members who are present. I declare the amendment negatived. Ms. Andrew Lowe. Mr. President, I move that in the event of further divisions being claimed at this meeting in respect of the ex opposition to expansion of labor, and this amendment, this council should proceed for with the division after the bell is ring for one minute. I now put a question to Mr. Andrew Lung's motion to be passed. Does any member wish to speak? I now put a question to a stated. Those in favour, please raise their hands. Those against, uh, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members who are present, and I declare the motion passed. I direct that in the event of further divisions being claimed at this meeting in respect of opposing the expansion of labour importation, 
and its motion. This council shall proceed forward to the vision of the vision bell has been rung for one minute. Mr. Frankie Yick, would you please move your amendments? Mr. President, I move that Mr. Kwok Wai Kong's motion be amended. I now propose a question to you, and that is an amendment moved by Mr. Frankie Yick to Mr. Kwok Wai Kong's motion be passed. I put the question to you as stated. With those in favor, please raise their hands. With those against, please raise their hands. I think the question, Mr. Li Chao Yan claims his vision, the bell will ring for one minute. Voting begins. Please check your votes. If there is no query, voting is closed. Results displayed. Members returned by FCs 27 present, 11 for, 11 against, 5 abstained. Members returned by GCs 31 present, 4 for, 19 against. Seven abstained. The question is not agreed by majority of each of the two groups of members are present. I declare the amendment negatived. Ms. Chen Lai Wan, you may now move the amendment. Mr. President, I move that Mr. Kwa Wai Kong's motion be amended. I now propose a question to you, and that is that the amendment moved by Ms. Chen Lai Wan to Mr. Kwa Wai Kong's motion be passed. I now put a question to you as stated. With those in favor, please raise your hands. Those against, please raise your hands. I think the question is. Mr. Albert Chen claims his vision. The bell ring for one minute. Voting begins. Please share your vote. If there is no query, voting is closed. Results displayed. Members returned by FCs 27 present, 13 for, 7 against, 7 abstained. Members returned by FCs 31 present, 9 for, 18 against, 3 abstained. The question is not agreed by majority of each of two groups of members are present. I declare the amendment negatived. Mr. Lee Chuck Yan, you may now move your amendment. Mr. President, I move Mr. I move that Mr. Kwok Wai Kong's motion be amended. I now propose a question that, that is amendment moved by Mr. Lee Chuck Yan to Mr. Kwok's motion be passed. I now put the question to as stated. With those in favor, please raise their hands. Those against, please raise their hands. I think a question. Mr. Jeffrey Lam claims the division. The uh, claims the division. The bell ring for one minute.
开始表决。Voting begins. Please check your votes. If there is no query, voting is closed. The results are displayed. Members returned by FCs, 27 present, 11, 21 present, 11 for 12 against, 4 abstained. Members returned by GCs, 31 present, 24, 3 against, 7 abstained. The question is not agreed by majority of each of the two groups of members who are present. I declare the amendment negatived. Mr. Kowai Kong, you may now reply. You have 2 minutes and 32 seconds. Thank you, Mr. President. Time is limited. I just res uh, respond briefly to Mr. Mo uh, Charles Mock and uh, Lam Tai Fai. We want the general labor uh, import policy and SLS and also the uh, import uh, talent importation scheme um, to come under the LAB, but um, it is now by the Immigration Department. That doesn't affect the um, coming of uh, Artists and also sports um, uh, sportsmen, um, sportsmen. Now the administration says that importation of labor will not undermine the interests of local workers, nor their job opportunities, nor their wages. But I find it strange. You just uh, tell people uh, that without losing blood, without um, um, the possibility of dying, uh, you will be stabbed. Now the officials and the business representatives are trying to pull wool over our eyes and cheat us into believing that uh, we should import more uh, foreign workers into Hong Kong. The FTU cannot support it. We strongly oppose it. I hope members will vote for my motion. Thank you, Mr. President. I now put a question to you, and that is the motion moved by Mr. Ko Wai Kong be passed. With those in favor, please raise their hands. Those against, please raise their hands. Ms. Lo Wai Kok claims the vision. The bell will ring for one minute. Voting begins. Please check your votes. If there is no query, voting is closed. Results are displayed. Members returned by FCs 27 present, 11 for, 12 against, 4 abstained. Members returned by GCs 31 present, 34, 3 against. Seven abstained. The question is not agreed by majority of each of two groups of members are present. I declare the motion negative. And now I adjourn the council until 11 a.m. on Wednesday, 20th of November, 2013.